welcome to the EST Hangout. This is the EST Hangout, and today's guests are... And a happy Tuesday morning to you. Welcome to the EST Hangout, which is presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer. The difference is clear with you today here on the Hangout on EdmontonSportsTalk.com, iHeartRadio, tune in as well as on YouTube, Matt Awanek, Tom Cazola. Uh, we got Jordan Ritchie from Nate Ooks joining us. As, uh, we've got lots to discuss. We'll talk some more, but we'll talk some uh, Nate Ooks today. And um, speaking of Nate, we also have, uh, <laughs> will joining us at some point, will be Zach Decom who was our practicum from Nate. Still our practicum for a few more days. Uh, so we get to ride him a couple more days. Hell really. yeah. Until, uh, until then next week, he would be an employee of ours as Dusty has offered him a job live on the morning show, which was really fun to watch. That was, that was great. I was listening on my drive in. I was like, is he going to do it? He's doing it. And it sounded emotional. You could see it on Zach's face, yeah. how excited he was yeah. that... Yeah, that, he wasn't expecting that part to come. He thought it was just the review. The review was great, by the way. The The talking part, I was like, ooh, nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if Pat Galenzo will accept that one for my uh, <laughs> yeah, Nate submission. You write I get it the in. form that I got to fill out from Nate, Pat, but listen. I'm just going to go timestamp YouTube. This kid's chatty. We're not, <laughs> we're, we're just saying. I just met him for the first time, and the look on his eyes was amazing. He, uh, he looks so excited. So uh, good job, guys. Thank you. Well, um, yeah, thank you. It's, Look it's, at us growing. <laughs> we're, we're, well, I didn't even think of that. It is one of those things that I don't know. It, we're we're talking about it. The four of us now. Yeah, is it four? Yeah. Well, now it's six. Well, he'd be four. No, I'm, I'm from Nate. Oh right. You're an RTA grad. I'm yeah. an RTA grad. Yeah. Eric's an RTA grad. Zach to come will soon be an RTA grad. Dusty and, and Trev Lethbridge. are from Lethbridge. Yeah. Um, and then back at twelve sixty, we took a lot of different Nate people on, and yeah. Hernan Salas. Uh, he's going to be on the Hangout on Thursday. Uh, RTA Latino grad. Um, Uremchuk. Yeah. Through us, RTA grad. Mark yeah. Michaud, RTA grad. Man, that's uh, unreal, actually. Corey Graham, who's before all of yeah. us with CG. this, RTA grad. Yeah. Uh, Connor Halley? No, he no, went to, he wasn't. Connor went to the school that I think McCord went to, and I always forget the name of it. Canadian Modern School of Broadcasting? Yes, where the lady ditched town with all the Took money all and got money? arrested in like... No way. <laughs> Tennessee or something like that. Oh, oh right. it's very like the people sketch. that got through it, they've done successful, but they stole money like the school and all that. <laughs> uh, Wyatt, who's Quiet, white, Wyatt. white court, with, yes. play by play. Um, Shane have, Clossings in Saskatoon doing news. Oh, I remember Shane. Yeah, and uh, we, um, Trevor Harris. Remember how we had Trevor Harris on? Yeah. His brother, his brother, Kyle, was a practicum student yep. through Strutty. And he played in Lloyd. I remember that. Wow. Then he took over as a uh, play-by-play in Lloyd. Good kid. And then, and um, I, I feel bad for her because oh, right. it was right at the start of COVID, or like it was during COVID, so we had to end the practicum early. Um, Mackenzie? But Bruce Simpson, who's with William Huff, his daughter Mackenzie, was yeah. practicum with Dave and I. Yeah. Unfortunately, we had to end that one because COVID hit and we couldn't have people coming I into the building. Um, but yeah, we also had Mackenzie. We got a good run. Yeah. Go neat. Jordan, you Damn guys right. keep pumping up good ones. Yeah. Like, right there. Awesome. Any of you guys play varsity sport? No. 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 I was done sport. <laughs> Did you would, you? would you have been eligible to play hockey? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I could have made that team. I would have. Well, you would have made the team, yeah. I would assume. What year was that, Tom? Uh, 2000. When did I finish playing hockey? Seven. Yeah, you would have made that team. Yeah. I don't think they were particularly <laughs> great. So. Uh, I was done with hockey, though, so after my last year of Jungle Bee. How long have you been with Nate? Well, I've been in Nate for 20 years um, in some form. I started as the badminton coach, actually, at Nate. So, really? Uh, Damn. Worked my way up a little bit, and uh, here we are, so it's great. I always loved badminton and gym. Yeah. It's always that sport that anybody can just go play on your lunch hour. You don't have to change. You just get out there and start hitting the bird around. Get those nice little drop shots yeah. in there. <laughs> Dropping the have you guys took, taken in pickleball? You know what? Um, That's a great question. That yeah. is a great question. Have you guys played? No, and I, I haven't. To. But anyone that I've heard they goes play it. it. They love it. Yeah. Say it's easy to learn. Yeah, it is. I played it at the Christmas break this year. It was unbelievable. Uh, I'm I'm hooked. I want to play all the time. Really? Yeah. It is. It's one of those games you play once. You're like, this is stupid, right? And then you start playing, and like, this is so good. And you <laughs> want to just keep playing and playing. So we're actually looking at it for from a recreational standpoint at eight. I can and, see that. Uh, That's we have cool. a. 
You guys remember the pool we had at Nate? Yeah. Hasn't had water in it for a long time. No. Really? Yeah. So when COVID happened, we took the water out. And uh, so now we're trying to figure out something to do with that space because it's too expensive to put water back in and mm. get the pool back operational. So I know one of the ideas is let's cover it up and get giant pickleball courts going. And students ask about it all the time, too. So you think, I used to think it was for uh, old people, right? But, Same. Uh, it actually, it's it's unreal. It's a lot of fun. Jordan, I have a friend, uh, Michelle McMahon. She She's a friend of the station, too. Um, she was the Dallas Stars ringside reporter for the last few years. Before that, she was with the Hurricanes, uh, NHL Network. And last season, when she was here with the Stars, she's like, I'm taking a job full-time pickleball coverage. <laughs> and I was like, you're out of your mind. She goes, Tom, there's a pro league. And she goes, this guy, this celebrity, this celebrity, this celebrity, this former pro this pro this pro all own teams i think lebron has a team in this league and i'm literally flipping channels one day and i can hear misha's voice and then i see her on camera and she's doing like a pickleball event in mesa arizona and i'm like this is unbelievable and she goes no joke i text her i'm like misha i'm watching you she goes tom i told you this is like a serious thing and they have like mixed teams men's women's uh, I, I can't remember the age categories, but like the money that's starting to go into this and how popular it has yeah. become. Because like you, I had the same reaction yeah. to pickleball. It's like my mom and dad play. They <laughs> yell at each other after their matches because yeah. they're both bad. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I was like, this sounds so ridiculous. And then I started watching it. I watched like a whole tournament one day. Did you? I loved it. I tried watching. I can't get into watching it. It, it has a weird sound. It yeah. does, but... Like, you see the strategy, and, and I'm like, this seems awesome. So I want to play. So you had that kind of same Yeah, epiphany. I was hooked right away. Now, I had the badminton background a little bit, but just getting in there, and I'm like, this is unreal. And just everybody I've talked to, they go play. We've got a group of uh, people in our neighborhood, and now we want to go play every once a month, get all together. It's very social as well, too. You can go out, uh, have a, a few beverages or some food afterwards. It's a real social game. Yeah, you drink in and getting in yeah. the kitchen. <laughs> You got the terms down, Tom. Yeah, no, I, I watched, I, like I said, I watched the whole yeah, no tournament. <laughs> uh, Jamo's into it. He loves yeah. it. Yeah. It's just something, yeah, I don't know. It's And, like, you love Arizona. They're turning a lot of stuff into pickleball courts oh, in those communities. Man, uh, my parents' old place, like, they built a new club on the new whatever section of the community, and they didn't even bother with tennis courts. They just went straight pickleball. <laughs> they went they had like 12 pickleball courts to add to like the four that they had prior to that and it was just it was always busy you can hear the little ping ping of the the funny ball sound and uh yeah it's they Isn't love it gene into prince into pickleball or something gene prince Bay? i don't know i can ask there's something with the oilers like that there was like an oil well, they did a team builder i think at the start of the year was that they? what it was they did I don't know. I think, I don't so. know. I think you're right. Because yeah. we've always had people mention that, like, the Oilers, yeah. there's a couple. Of, Craig Button was the one. Because Craig Button's oh, big into pickleball. You hear about him all the time yes. talking about it. And he, people say he should take on, like, certain Oilers or something. Oh. That must be what it's connected yeah. to. Yeah. They they did, on the road, they had a team building day where they had a pickleball yeah. tournament. I remember yeah. that. That's yeah, crazy. That's right. Maybe we need a team EST pickleball That would be awesome. Time. A tournament. Yeah. Uh, that started. might get a little too intense. <laughs> it would get intense. We... We could turn things competitive. Yeah. I'm still the champ of Tecmo Super Bowl on the Super Nintendo system. <laughs> you are. Number one. Yeah. Greatest season in history. Greatest season in history. Took down Dusty, you Yukon, and Herna. Greatest season. There 48 was, games, only nine losses. Jordan, there was yelling. Rolled. There was crying. There was Oh, I remember hearing you guys talk about it, and you could you could feel the energy uh, when it came to you guys talking about Tecmo Bowl. <laughs> I kicked the wall many times. <laughs> yeah. I kicked a chair and I think broke it a few times. Oh, those chairs There's, were not very good anyway. No, but it broke those. Um, I wasn't dumb enough to punch the cabinet next to me, but I wanted to. Did somebody? No, I don't <laughs> no. think anyone did. But like, there'd be, I've slapped it. Like, I just would like smack it real yeah, hard yeah, because yeah. it's frustration. Yeah. Um, when you lose, it ruins your day. <laughs> Legitimately. I'm not even joking. For the when people could sit there and be like, you guys are insane. I don't care. They were For, we would walk if I played a game in the afternoon and I lost, I got in my car, I drove home and I was mad. <laughs> I was fuming that I lost to any of them. I remember those. And then days. the next day it was let's play again, let's go. And um I learned from my mistakes and I don't lose. Yeah, I love anymore. the passion. Stayed away from that one. It got us through COVID so much. <laughs> I like we how the divider you guys built for COVID. I was like, wow, that's yeah, and it's, not going to work. Well, it worked great. Did it? 
for, it made the it game met better. protocol. Well, it met protocol. Of, yeah. But so we had to build a divider because COVID, social yeah. distancing. So we're like, we'll put a divider in there. And the guy <laughs> built something with hockey sticks. And it was great. But then the thing about Tecmo is like, we had it as you don't have your own controller. It was like an arcade game. So yeah. you had the joystick all on the machine. But if you call the other person's play, it's a blitz. Yeah. And you can't do anything offensively. So you could see the other person, what they're trying to do. Oh, yeah. So the divider stopped that. Ah, the divider oh. and we're like okay this is great for covid but no this is better for us playing because now there's a little bit of protection you can't see what i'm doing that was hilarious awesome. oh, wow we had a great time <laughs> with that um we do just need to bring it back and then yeah. no work will get done here yeah zacticum will have to be hosting shows great because dusty and i will be well you're the one air checking <clears throat> him he should be ready soon <laughs> I don't care if he's ready or not. If we get that machine, <laughs> Zach, you're, Zach, Trev, get in there. Yeah. We're playing Tecmo yeah. right now. No, or like we just this. stream Tecmo because we could do whatever the hell we want. We did want. talk about this before. We did talk about this. It's uh, silly. We, will, we do have the EST keyword, uh, EST flyaway keyword. We want to send you to Las Vegas. That's coming up uh, during the Hangout today. Um, before we get into some native athletics, though, let's quickly talk about the Edmonton Oilers last night as we get to a Hangout headlines brought to you by the Ranch Golf and Country Club, offering premier conditions, top-notch service, unmatched value. The Ranch Golf Club will give be a great choice for your rounds this season. They are open. Book your tee time right now. Visit theranchgolf.com. Murray was on yesterday talking just how great the conditions are and how great it's going to be this year. They were great conditions last year. Um, they're in a better spot this year than they were at this point last year, so it's going to be a great season. Um, but the Edmonton Oilers, is there anything we take away from that game yesterday, or do we just be like, hey, Connor McDavid got 100 assists? Jordan, go for it. Oh, wow. Yeah, what do you say about that? Hey, it's... Uh... It's exciting, right? I'm sure the fans, it was Fan Appreciation Day, wasn't it, last yeah. night? So. Yeah, they gave the fans a lot <laughs> to cheer They got all the Pepsi and A&W, their hearts desired, and those little silly uh, pl- uh, paper helmets. Yeah, and nine goals, right? Yep. You can't uh, go wrong with nine goals. So, yeah, I know it's, uh, it's exciting. This time of year is really exciting. I know my son's like, are we going to a game? And I'm like, well, good luck. Those tickets are gold. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's really exciting. And you know what? The only thing I take away from it is, uh, Connor looked good and Mm -hmm. obviously you're a little nervous, right? When, uh, Mm -hmm. he's out for a bit. So to see him, uh, I think he's good to go. Yesterday was more an interesting day, more so just seeing the other scoreboard, which is the wild beating the Kings. And now the path is open for the Golden Knights to take that spot. Do you think the Kings do that on purpose? (sighs) No, no. Because, uh, like, the, the thing is, would you rather take on the Oilers or the Stars? Yeah, I don't know. I just watch through Oilers colored goggles, I guess. But uh, I don't know. you got two of the best players in the world. I'd, yeah. I'd avoid them. I think if you're the Kings, you look at that and you go, it's 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 difficult either way. Yeah. There's no good option yeah. in that one. No, it's going to sure. be tough. Um, but maybe, I guess. I... I I just can't believe all of a sudden the Golden Knights have this destiny and they get the Blackhawks and the Ducks and then all of a sudden we have Oilers Golden Knights in the first round after what it looked like late last week or something where it, it very much looked like, hey, the Golden Knights are going to the Central. That side is going to be completely loaded and does that not open up things in the Pacific? But now we're here like, oh boy, it could be Oilers Golden Knights. But is there an easy matchup though really in the playoffs? That's what I say. That all teams are... That's a good point. Yeah, they're all playing well. So it's going to be a war to win the Cup and... I think Edmonton can do it, but we'll see. The Kings are the team you'd want to face. Though. Yeah, you're right. Like with the way the Preds have, have kind of faltered a little bit from how good they were at one point in March, just rallying off wins. But that's a team that I think could take you down. Like you've got to be scared of the Predators. It's not an easy series. Even though the Oilers have a great history against the Preds in the regular season, um, the Kings are the team that I just yeah. – uh, Riddich and Talbot and that. Yeah, well, that's not what you want to be going to the playoffs with. I yeah, would think Golden Knights have Hill and Logan yeah. Thompson trying to figure things out, plus all these injuries. So I don't but know. Hill Maddie, has the like, ability to do it. We talked about it on the post game show last night, Cass and I, and it's like if you're the Oilers, you just want to plow through whoever you're playing. Doesn't matter if it is Vegas or it yeah. is uh, the LA Kings. Like, who cares? Just gotta, go beat them. You got to beat someone. Yeah. Selfishly, I'm in Vegas on the 28th, and so I wouldn't mind seeing a game down there, but. Uh, I'm with you. I'd rather. I don't think it matters who they play. They have to win, beat any a tough team for sure. So yeah, I'll be tight to get a game on the 20. Well, I know we're looking at you, maybe game six potentially because we're there for four days. You say Monday it starts Monday. So if it goes Monday, oh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Sunday would be game four, the 28th. 
That would be in Vegas. Oh, our flight gets in at 5. It'll be right from the airport right there. But That game probably doesn't get going until 7 Pacific. Uh, it's yeah. US TV, though, you never know, right? They but it, his, historically with the Oilers, yeah. in the first couple of rounds, they still always play late. Yeah, they push it back. Yeah. So Plus, it, you uh, land... Take your stuff, drop it off, and get right to that right check yeah. baggage. I mean, carry on only, right? Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. they're going two games Saturday, two Sunday, four Monday, four Tuesday. So it's going to be a busy slate. Can you say that again? Two games Saturday, two games Sunday, four games yeah. Monday, four games Tuesday. And then get into the four game stretch. There. Yeah. Huh. That's the, that's what the talk around the press box was yesterday. All right. I have to t- tell my friends and say, books, get some tickets for us. That'll be great. That's going to be uh, inexpensive, yeah. Jordan, and uh, I wish you guys well. Yeah, I'll be. That's what sucks actually now about this week. Outside, like we got the one playoff spot to watch really tonight out east yeah. with that last spot. Yeah, but for the Oilers, it's just like there's two meaningless games here. Yeah, like totally. it's like just like, and, and I'll be intrigued to see how the Oilers handle this. You brought up a great point yesterday that they don't have a lot of call ups, like. There's not a lot you could do of taking guys out of the lineup. Yeah. But seeing how they deploy the guys during the games is going to be fascinating. I think it'll be similar to what we saw yesterday. Just roll four lines, lines three and four, depending on the situation in the game. Get more of the the ice time. You basically flip it. Uh, like you, uh, Unlike how you'd normally do it. So lines two and three, or one and two become three and four, and three and four become one and two, especially against Arizona. That will be the last game in Arizona, won't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Although they're for now, this, this, yeah. Yeah. until they expand, they get the expansion again. Oh, yeah, come on. and talking to friends around the league, I, I brought this up. I said, "How about them allowing Morello to keep the the naming and the logos and the trademarks of the Coyotes?" Is that the the, the that's part of the deal? So now, is that the history though? Yep. So the, the Jets stay, the Jets' history and the Coyotes' history is staying there. Uh, yeah. So, and the Ryan Smith is getting an expansion team in effect. Yeah. This is the Ravens situation with the Browns where everything stayed in Cleveland. Yes. Ravens were brand new and then the Browns came back in a couple years and they kept their history. Correct. Because mm-hmm. they are ceasing the Arizona franchise and creating the Salt Lake one. Uh, reading Chris Johnson's story yesterday in The Athletic. And then... Morello, if he can get land for uh, to to develop this arena and district, which a lot of people are naysayers <laughs> in the valley, um, then he can continue uh, with an expansion Coyotes franchise that would retain all of that. It's oh, okay. it's convoluted. It's kind of like you remember the the San Jose Sharks are technically part of like the is it the Seals history? I would or? assume that's. Or, Are they? Because like in '91, Minnesota had to give San Jose a bunch of players. Oh, I don't for know some that one. reason. Yeah, I have to look <laughs> back on it. There's something we need weird like to that. come in for that one. Jamo, I think <laughs> yeah, knows. Right. I talked to him about it once. But there is something where a bunch of Minnesota North Stars players ended up with the San Jose Sharks, and it had to go. It had something to do with the prior move okay. from a franchise or some kind of a dispersion draft from a folding franchise. I can't remember which one it was but uh yeah there's something like that because kansas city moved to denver denver moved to new jersey cleveland maybe it had something to do with cleveland the barons that lasted a couple of years wow never heard of that yeah will hockey ever work in arizona though here's where i i, I want want to say i don't know yet yeah even though they've been there for how long is they haven't been successful for a couple years on the ice, yeah. and that and I say that about the Columbus Blue Jackets too. I'd like to see them be a consistent playoff team for three, four years, yeah. and see can that build a fan base? Can that build an organite, you know, a group that goes like, yeah, this is our team, as opposed to a team that just more often than not is in the bottom, being the team that oh, we got Pavel Datsuk and Chris Pronger, and who else did they bring in on those? LTIR contracts that never play, right? Like we're yeah. just the salary dumps. Yeah. How do you build a fan base when that's what you're telling your your your, your franchise? You have to go wasteland. look. That's exactly. They had and a that's few. Where, they had a few like Brian Little was on there the other day, and I was looking at their injury list. Uh, yeah, they still have a few where they've eaten that just to get to. I think Brent Seabrook's name is on there. He's with one team. That would make sense. Yeah, uh, but like playoffs. Okay, so like. Let's go the last few years. So missed playoffs, missed playoffs, missed playoffs. 1920, um, this was bubble year, got to the playoffs. 
won their qualifying round loss to the Avs, then missed playoffs, 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 playoffs, conference finals, two years. So this is like the closest they've ever had was 09 to 12. They made the playoffs three straight years. Lost in the first round thrice, went to the conference finals, but then immediately just falls off. Prior to that, missed the playoffs for six years. You know, it's like, okay, well, I would have loved to have seen what the Coyotes could have been had they been... You know, if that team that went to the conference finals was a threat the next year again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even we talked about them going to the regular season. Okay, this is getting, this might be their Stanley Cup year. Like, we never went in like, hey, maybe a Stanley Cup window is opening up for the Coyotes. So, yeah. I don't know if it could work. But you always hear it's the arena, it's the location, yeah. it's all of that. That's, which, yeah. yeah, you're right. Like, that was a conversation that came up yesterday in the press level. And um, someone pointed out to me, they're like, look at Florida. Their arena is in Sunrise. Yeah. It's yeah. 45 minutes away from anything. Yeah. And people are showing up there. Carolina isn't very close. It's a pain in the ass to get to. The storm surge is still a big thing. <laughs> like, I, Owner of Coyote, Moreno. Alex Morello. Morello, thank you. Here's the question I'd have from him, though. Like, do I really want to get all this money to build a new rink and bring a team here? Because what if it actually doesn't work? Which is a very likely possibility. That you bring this team back to Arizona... Yeah. And through four or five years, Arizona just keeps not showing up because they don't care. What do you do with that franchise? What are you doing with this rink? Arizona doesn't need a new rink. I'll tell you that right now for for, for concerts and stuff. They've got a few. Yeah, they do. They're pretty good. They've got Glendale. They've got where the Suns play. And they've got a baseball stadium and a football stadium to play. Like, they've got a lot of different spots. Yeah. Are you really going to just build a rink with the potential that maybe the Coyotes have to move again in six years? Or do you just take your billion and run? That's a good question. Pickleball league, maybe you never know. Yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking. retrofits the entire new facility that he eventually gets just for pickleball. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 going to be a fascinating little thing to watch because Batman's still going to want this to be done. That's his. He's going to stay on until he, I believe, is commish until Arizona's figured out again. See, other people think he's done after this year. Really? Yeah. Mm. This is him waving the white flag entirely and walking away? Yeah. It's, I would be pleasantly surprised and impressed by Gary Bettman for walking away. He just seems too stubborn to me yeah. that he'd sit there and be like, okay, hey, Arizona's leaving, but I'm going to make sure they get that franchise again, and I'm staying until it gets back. Hmm. Matty, <laughs> I don't think – I think tomorrow is the last game in Arizona Coyotes history, ultimately. Oh, man. There's some other stuff that's – not public yet about their current owner, soon to be former owner, that it's not good. Okay. I will say I'm sad I never got to Mullet Arena for a game. I was just going to ask, has anybody been there? Have you been? No. No. Anyone I've heard that has yeah. gone had a great time. Yeah. yeah. They talked about how amazing that experience was. Now, should it be a day in and day out hockey place? Absolutely not. No. But the experience is worth it. Just and the it's name, a shame. Just the name Mullet Arena. That's unreal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's a small little thing that you got to go out. Yeah. Like, t- tomorrow, well, maybe not as easy battle uh, tomorrow, but the last game. Was, you're watching Connor McDavid and Leon Dry settle in this intimate barn. Yeah. That would be just amazing. It would be. For the one-off, right? Right. That's where I'm sad I never got there for the game. Yeah. Or yes. And I wish they had one more year. Like, uh, they didn't say, well, we're going to move to Salt Lake in one year. And then we could all just rush to buy tickets just to go see it. I was checking the prices for that game, the Oilers game. The cheapest seat you could see, I thought, was like $600. Yeah, they tripled them. Let's yeah. see what it is. Would yeah. you sell if you had a ticket to that? Absolutely. If you're an Oiler fan, <laughs> if you're an Oiler fan planning a trip down <laughs> yeah. there, would you sell your Absolutely. ticket? Absolutely. Pay for playoff tickets here? Yep. Edmonton and that, and then that's another thing, too, is like people with season seats here, like, if they're savvy enough or they're they're on top of it, like they sell their tickets and kind of recoup some of their costs. Yeah. Which is you could sell one ticket, let's say for games one and two, yeah. you sell game yeah. two. You probably pay for game one with the selling of game two. Absolutely. Hundred percent. So tickets right now. This event is selling fast according to StubHub. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> two tickets. Continue. I want to be paired together. Yep. Lowest right now, five fifty nine Canadian. But then six hundred not far till 700. That's there. Yeah. I Now the question is, how many Arizona fans really are just jumping at this? Yeah. Right? 
Uh, Joaquin Gage <laughs> with the text coming in hot here. He says, the, the lesson here is don't draft a doan. The team leaves a year later. <laughs> he's been special to watch, though, hey? So far, yeah. yeah like, he's been good. He's lighting it up. He had a nice night in Calgary. And now he could go build. Zach's joining us now. Perfect. I was oh, actually just about to text you. You can join us. Oh, nice. Um, now he gets to go build the Utah franchise. I heard it's going to be Utah. I was reading online because part of the bill for funding for a new arena states to get funding it has to be Utah, not oh, Salt Lake. Okay, whatever. So likely what I, what this team will eventually be called is Utah because Ryan Smith, not Ryan Smith, the Oilers, <laughs> the, the owner, he is buying. Uh, he needs to get a new facility because yeah. he wants it for the Jazz. He'll have it for this. Yep, and it's all part of the plans. Don't worry, Zach. I'll get you on camera here. Okay. Uh, it's part of the plans to get the Olympics in 2030, I believe, is when they want the Olympics right. to return to Salt Lake. Oh, okay. See, I like the name, like, Utah Yetis, I saw. That would be... That's funny. It's, it's something different, but I don't know. Utah they Yotes, they can't like keep that. the name, though. So are they keeping the Coyotes name? No, because the that old owner retains the, the trademarks okay, and yeah. the names and the licensing. And if you're that, like, you wouldn't want... Yeah. To have any connection to no, that old, yeah. Right. I also think though, if you're expand, like if you're redoing Arizona, I don't think I'd want to be the Coyotes again either, unless you have that same owner who owns all that stuff. Technically, I, I the know, league owns that. And the the logos and stuff. But and don't names. like even there, isn't it smarter business yeah. to start fresh with a brand new name, a brand new everything? I don't know because they're like I don't think people of Arizona don't know too many of them, but I don't think they think too fondly of the Coyotes. Yeah, they're an afterthought. That's true. If they change their name, maybe people will be like, oh, a new team or whatever, right? Not a new team, but something else to do, just fresh slate. Yeah. But there is a junior a Coyotes rebrand. program. They do have Ice Den in Scottsdale. I think they have a couple of other ones. So mm. I is don't know. It, is it Utah or Salt Lake? What's the, what do you go with? Would you, would well, you, it'll be Utah, I think. Yeah. You think yeah. the name would be because that? of the yeah. building okay. to the arena. That, yeah, it would be, it would have to be Utah, I think. Okay. I just, and that's fine. Whatever. Salt Lake City it, it's does the reason really, it's Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is because when they went to Glendale, the part of some of the changes that they went with, I remember one of the court stuff was that they had to become the state team as opposed to the city team. Right. Because they weren't playing in Phoenix anymore. Right. Because oh, okay. Phoenix is, is like Metro Phoenix is massive. Yeah. The city of Phoenix is only a part of it. Yeah. Right? There's Glendale. There's Tempe, Mesa, Mesa. There's Tempe. Goodyear, there's Scottsdale. There's Goodyear. Peoria. There's all sorts of like the Chandler. Yeah. So there's all sorts of these little cities, towns, if you will. Yeah. That make up Metro Phoenix. So they had to become Arizona because it was like the, um, when they went from Los Angeles Angels. Or they were the Cal they were the Anaheim Angels and then they had to become the... California Angels. Of Anaheim or Los Angeles, Los Angeles Angels, Angels of Anaheim, Anaheim and stuff because they kept Anaheim, but they beautiful named Beautiful name. Los Angeles. <laughs> and they should have, maybe they would have, if they were still that full name, Otani would have stayed. Right? <laughs> uh, this is the ESD Hangout presented by White Claw. Uh, we got Jordan Ritchie from Nate Ooks with us here. Uh, Tom Zola, Matawanek, and then Zach to come, who is uh, a Nate Ook as well. We're all Nate Ooks. Yay. Um, your practicum still is on until Friday, but um, Dusty offered you a job today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. I couldn't be happier. Like, <laughs> he texted me uh, yesterday, I think, and he's like, hey, Tuesday, like, tomorrow we need you from 840 on until the end of the show. We're going to do a live practicum review. And I said, oh, okay, <laughs> I mean, there's something there. And he asked me about the Vegas Golden Knights hat. I had to rate myself. Uh, what was the question? It was... Uh, on Oilers game days... Uh, against the Golden Knights. Against the Golden Knights specifically. Um, how good are you at not wearing the Vegas hat? And I mean, one well, of the games I showed that up... one miserably. One of the games of I the... did show up, though. I had oh, the yeah. bounce back, so I gave myself a 2. I got a 2 on that. You gave yourself of a, a 2. 2.5, first of all. I did. There's no point fives. Well, there is but a But you point corrected five, yourself. Though. It's all good. There's a mark. There was a There's mark. A mark. Dusty took away yeah. that point five. Yeah, but I Dusty's know. Dusty's rule was there was no point fives. I know. I used to fight good. with Lammy about point fives. Of course you did. Well, it's a mark. Well, right, wasn't that? Is, I, so we did a current affairs exam back at Nate, and one of the questions was something about a story about a school in Marathorpe or something. And she says, where did this teacher teach? And I didn't know what school it was, so I said a school. 
You, they, 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 I'm not wrong. You're not wrong. Like, and she's like, well, no, it's a Merithorpe school or whatever. It's like, yeah, but it's a school. Like, I'm not, you can't tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> you can't look at this answer and say I am of course wrong. You were that at the guy. very least, I get a 0. 0.5 <laughs> on this guy? one. He's that guy. I get yeah. this. And she told me to shut up and sit down. I was like, yes, <laughs> I was right. Lamia is awesome. Why I was would not, because I was not wrong. You can't give me a zero. I was not wrong. You weren't. I agree. I would fight on that too. It was a school. Oh, man. You didn't tell me the name, <laughs> the specific name of the school. You just said, where does he teach? It could be yep. a university. So you would have school. Ex- what is the name of the school yep. he taught at? Yeah, you have to be specific. I think that otherwise... They still do that. Otherwise, you got to yeah. give me a 0. 0.5. Yeah. I'm not wrong. I think that happened with Sly in one of my assignments, too. Or one of the students <laughs> went up to her and got a half mark because she wasn't specific enough. So now every rubric is so drawn out and so on the point that you can't really do anything like that in a gray area kind of thing. I mean, if it's not there on the rubric, right? Like, you got you to gotta follow by the words. I had a physics teacher in high school that told me a story about how back in the day with one of the diploma exams in physics, it was something about how do you, like, the question was basically, how do you stop rust on your car or something? And all this person did was write, paint it. And they got full marks because <laughs> it's true. Yeah. That's all you have to do. And then they had to change questions moving forward where they're like, you know, yeah. do the full equation, like right. how to make it very specific of like, no, you got to do the math and the physics behind how do you fix this rust. But that one guy just wrote, paint it and got it right. See, the government, the education of Alberta, they, they got it right. Lamia got it wrong. <laughs> she gave me a zero. I still am not going to let you this go. When was I was oh, in school in 2009, I think it was. Yeah. Not going to let this one go. Oh, I haven't wow. seen Lamia in years, but next time I see her, I'm bringing this one up. Poor Lamia. I'm writing it in your evaluation. Do it. Please pass this along to Lamia. She was wrong. Is she still there? Yeah. Yeah, Lamia's still yeah, there. Yeah, she's, she's still great. teaching. She's, she's the best there, yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. Everybody loved her, and everyone there is so amazing, actually. Like, great Nate crew. was such a great experience, and... You know, through radio and television, of course, I got to work with uh, athletics yeah. and I was doing scorekeeping for hockey. And then I started doing play by play for them as well, Yeah, which was fantastic to see everything. And even this year, like I was doing a, a bit of it. I filled in for some game, games and stuff, um, even during practicum here. Yeah. I mean, the I guess fall semester, I was doing it um, the entire the entire way up until uh, the new year. But well, thank like, you for your yeah. service. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was a great time. And seeing seeing the women's team win in hockey, uh, I went to that game. Fantastic game. Yeah. Everyone was cheering. It was so loud. Like, the support was insane. Yeah, that was great like, to what see. What a year for them. How was overall Nadu Athletics this season? It was great. It was, a, it was a pretty special year, actually, women's hockey uh, winning it. Uh, that team went through, they went through the ringer this year with just ups and downs, ups and downs, to the point where I remember meeting with them at Christmas and just wondering, are we going to make it here? Like they were just battling through it. And then uh, a true testament to them, they just rallied and uh, said, you know what, let's, let's win this whole thing. And they went on and won. And it was, it was really good to watch them battle through. There was three teams in the league and they just had to go toe to toe with Lakeland who's a new team into our league out in uh, Lloyd Minster and uh, Red Deer as well too. Um, They play in this beautiful barn, uh, Canada games arena over there. It's just, it's unreal. Um, but yeah, really a good experience for them and so happy for them. And they, like you said, just to see their, their, their faces, um, that's their Stanley cup, right? When they won, it was gloves in the air helmets. Mm-hmm. It was just the whole rink was out there clapping at the end of the medals that everybody came down. It was just a really good experience to, to see for them. So that was good. Um, can't go without talking about our men's volleyball team. Uh, they won a national championship for the first time in history. So nice. That was, uh, well, yeah, I don't know if you guys follow me- Nate men's volleyball, but they've never won. They never won an ACAC championship since 1972 or 74 or something like that. It's been a long time anyway. And uh, to come through and uh, volleyball in Alberta is amazing. As we see the Golden Bears all the time, they're just up there. Well, national champs as well, too. Golden Bears and Pandas always have had a great volleyball program. Yeah, but uh, to see this group come in with a lot of veterans and stuff, uh, go win the championship and then go to Victoria and win the national championship and just great, great bunch of people. A lot of graduating players, but, uh, you know, the great recruiter is winning, uh, winning a championship. So now our coaches uh, got players ca- emailing, calling him, wanting him to come back and stuff. So we're put, we've put a bid in to host the national championships in two years oh, now nice. that we've got a little cool. success there. So 
We don't have the uh, newest, fanciest gym, um, but it's got character. We like to say it's got character, <laughs> right? The, the it wood, does. With the We've wood also had some time in there. It has stuff. character. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and, and then um, yeah, what was really exciting for us at Nate this year is we brought back curling and us, right? Not curling, uh, golf and cross country. So that was uh, how long was golf gone for? Uh, they were both gone 2014. Okay, that yeah, oh shoot, yeah. I didn't know there was ever a golf program. At well, Nate's. it was run differently before, it was almost an extension of an intramurals program. You just uh, kind of okay. walked in and then he'd take you to a tournament. We didn't have a lot of success uh, back then. Um, but now we've got our, our program, our coach now, Tyler liked, he's, he's, um, he works at the Derrick golf and country club. And so he's, he's, uh, he's really good. Our first year he's got the team to nationals. So wow. the men's team won a bronze medal in the ACAC championships and then went on to nationals when they all posted some great scores and, uh, women's golf is, uh, it's tough to find women's players because if they're really good, they go down South to yep. NCAA. Oh, okay. Right. So, uh, it's tough, but, uh, well, we actually had a full team and mostly made up of our women's hockey players, actually dual sport athletes. So that just goes hand in hand, doesn't it? <laughs> golf and hockey. Yeah. Like, I don't, it just works it out really nice. It does. Yeah. We had one of our, there, uh, Michaela, she qualified for, um, uh, nationals as well too, in the first year or so. And then cross country running, we brought back as well too. And, uh, didn't have a huge team, but we know we got to start slow. And I uh, went, and two of the runners made nationals as well, too, wow. in the first year. So all in all, a very successful year. Uh, we had some coach of the year. Uh, we, we always celebrated a big awards night uh, in the Shaw Theater. You guys probably remember the Shaw Theater. Very Nate. nice theater. Yeah. Yep. Did you have Star Wars? And it was yes. Did you have Star Wars? Yeah, Star we did. Wars? Yeah. Mm, they might no. have got rid of that no. then. Yeah, it was bit. nice. It, it was, was a neat really well RTA done. little awards night. It was yeah. great. Yeah, and we always, yeah. it was at the, at the theater. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, same thing. We get there. And then the energy in these award shows, right? You have all these student athletes that just want to have a good time, right? Yep. So they just, the energy is unreal. We had our senior administration come out and they just, they see what it's all about. This is what it's about to be a student athlete, right? Uh, the energy, the passion, just a good, good night celebration. Showing some videos, uh, Gene uh, Principe did a cameo for us. Talked about all of our winners and everything. Threw it on the screen. It was it was just a good time. It was a fun night. How how much did you enjoy calling hockey? Oh, it was sure. great. I loved it the <laughs> entire way through. Like, I don't know a lot of the players seeing them grow and seeing a bunch of amazing stories. Just I guess firsthand calling each and every game. Like Rintaro Mashio coming from Japan <laughs> yeah, to play yeah. on the team. Yeah, couldn't speak any English whatsoever and came to play for the Nadukes and he was scratched and benched for a few games. I mean, he had to make his way into the lineup and stuff, but just the story there, like um, he was found just playing on an outdoor rink one day. He's never played professional hockey or not professional hockey, but any team hockey in his life. Um, the skills that and he then, just had, yeah. the hands, the skills, but you're right. He's never played c contact hockey. So yeah, to make the jump change. to the ACAC oh. was yeah, yeah wow. that's unreal actually. Yeah. And he did pretty well. I remember watching his uh, very first goal. That was super exciting. Yeah, he was fired up. The entire team was electrified from that goal, and you could tell that all the players on the team really support him. Yeah. and really want him to do well. Uh, in Nate, and I think he is. He's he's gotten to more games uh, this year as opposed to I guess his rookie year the um, year before this one. So. He, uh, he'll continue playing on the team there. You're so right. It's not about, in college sports, in my opinion, anyway, it's, <laughs> yes, it's about winning. You got to win those banners. That's what they're all there for. Mm -hmm. But it's these stories that like Zach's talking about right now. It's, um, those are the stories. We played the Korean national hockey team this year, uh, their junior team. Was it their junior team? It was a, uh, it was a university, university team, uh, university, yeah. uh, Korea University Tigers. Yeah. And they put up a fight. Oh, they, they were really so did. talented so fast. Our yeah. team had to put the body on them because they couldn't catch them. Like they were not so <laughs> quick they were, right? Um, but those are the stories, right? Uh, our women's hockey team is now, they're going to Europe next year for an exhibition series as well too um so they raised a bunch of money so now they're going to go for a 10-day trip and play some teams in germany that's what they all remember when i was coaching badminton as well too i took the team to the honolulu open for like 10 years in a row so oh you guys should have played great. badminton when you're there you got a trip to hawaii all the time. i'm kidding <laughs> if i knew that no. <laughs> maddie you want to blow out your rotator cuff even quicker <laughs> should have been on the badminton team <laughs> Oh, this is a trip to Hawaii? Let's yeah, go. worth it. Worth yeah, it. Let's go. Yeah. Like 10 days. I would do I've it never too. been. Yeah. Ever, but it, like uh, Scott Laurie, when he came back, uh, Redbeard, yeah. he's like, you never hear anyone come back from Hawaii and be like, it was all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> not, not bad. It's okay. <laughs> you only hear like, it was so amazing. It was yeah. beautiful. 
You've never been. I've you? never. I'd like to go at some point. Been? I've never left the country. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Got, yeah. You are only 20, do. so. Yeah, huh? He's a fresh baby. Uh, why is there nationals for hockey? That's a great question, but it comes down to money. Yeah. Um, right now, for there was. I, there yeah, was. I remember because my, my, my cousin, he used to coach the St. Ukes, or uh, the St. Trojans, and they'd always take on the Ukes. And Did you just say St. Ukes? I was. Yeah. Uh, oh, sleep. <laughs> but it was one of those where, like, whoever would win, they'd go to national, they'd destroy. Yeah. I remember, and then all of a sudden it was gone. Yeah, I know it was. Uh, yeah, they would. And that was the, the reason what it was is in Ontario and these other places that had it. It was basically intramural hockey where uh, ACAC hockey is very high level. It's former dub players, um, junior A players as well, too. It's it's really good hockey where they'd go to play these other teams. It was an intramural drop in thing. So they would win. I think our last nationals that Nate won, they won like 15 to two in the gold medal game. So can so you just East it? is scared. Yeah. Yeah, well, they have so many other options, right? They have so many yeah. other options out uh, in the East. So what's coming back, I think, is women's hockey nationals. There's been a, a few provinces right now that uh, want to do that with a growing game with the PWHL and all that as well, too. Um, they, they're interested in uh, potentially bringing to nationals for uh, with Quebec, Ontario, potentially BC, PacWest, and Alberta. So... That would be uh, spectacular if we can get to that. But, man, I don't know if it'll ever happen. It's expensive to run a hockey program as mm-hmm. well, too, right? It's it's one of the targets all the time when you're talking money and stuff. It's the hockey programs, right? Because it's just expensive. Stick budgets alone, right? But, yeah, it's so. got to be the biggest <laughs> biggest one probably in the yeah. the budget there, buying sticks and everything. I mean, each one's like $300, $250 bucks or something. Even at Pretty cost, they're ridiculous, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, uh, did you guys watch the uh, WNBA draft like yesterday? I had, it had it going on a little bit while I was working here. I can honestly say I did. I have never thought I would. I actually knew some players being drafted. That's unreal. Which is, it's such a change in how this is going. Yeah. And I'm excited to watch careers in the WNBA. I knew though, I knew the first five draft picks. It was amazing. It's fantastic. So it's, it's women's sport is growing, especially at the college level as well, too. Like there's, well, I got to see if I could pull it up today. Um, Masters numbers came out. And the Masters audience on CBS for the final round this year was 9.589 million, which is down 20% from last year's mm. average of 12 million. Well, Iowa, South Carolina had 18.9 million. Wow. Right? wow. Like it's, we're seeing this trend right now, especially the WNBA has been around for so long now. But women's basketball just keeps that one's growing so much bigger than it ever has. And, mm-hmm. and this is the, probably the first March Madness tournament we ever watched where people could name a lot more women than yeah. they could of the guys. Yeah. They, the star power was on the women's side of things and not on the men's side. Yeah. And now we're getting re- ready to watch Caitlin Clark and all of them in the WNBA this year and then watch Paige Becker go back to UConn and go next year. And then it's, it's great to see. Yeah. It's fun basketball. It's great basketball. Yeah, and now the PWHL, and I, I know um, Silent Ice has announced a women's league yeah. that yeah, they're female super league that they're going to be launching here, trying to help develop younger talent that goes to the PWHL. Like, yep, all of this, it's it's just great, yeah. you know. In this country, the Canadian women's national soccer team yeah. has been fantastic for decades now. Yeah, so it's it's, it's great to see. But, I saw uh, something on social media yesterday about. Caitlin Clark's salary is it only going to be like seventy eight thousand dollars next year because yeah. that's the rookie salary for four years. I wonder if that's going to change with all this going on. I think this generation of WNBA players is the one that changes the bar mm-hmm. for everything. If they bring a lot of money and eyeballs to the WNBA, and there's a lot more money now coming to the league, naturally, then salaries will have to start coming up. Yeah, like I know some people. There's the argument: Would she make more being at Iowa? Because she gets the NIL NIL money, but she's still going to get all those sponsorship money, and now she right. gets that. It, 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 it it's wild. To, this is like it's CFL money. Yeah, it's seventy k. That's what she's getting for the next like four years or something like that. Mm-hmm. Seventy to eighty k or something like that. But she'll get all that sponsorship money. But if all of a sudden the WNBA is pulling in, I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to be pulling in eighteen million people per game. That's mm-hmm. just not going to happen. But if the WNBA could pull in the playoffs, a million million five that's that's unbelievable television audience mm-hmm. and they bring in sponsors and they bring in money well yeah now all of a sudden we're probably going to see those salaries have to shoot up i think the average salary salary in the wnba is like two three hundred thousand i don't think it's that much higher yeah 
So that would have to change. Like, you can't yeah. tell me that it's... Yeah. If, if Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers turn into the players we think they will, and the eyeballs follow them, yeah, can't tell me it's not going to be more money for those players. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, it's a huge transformation. Team. Like, so, so much viewership and everything in this past year alone. Overall, sports for women's, like, I've never seen any... I mean, nobody's ever really seen anything... Like that, and the viewership is insane, and it's only going to continue to grow. I think, like, I don't know, it's, it's it's sort of been like stagnant for a while, where there wasn't a lot of viewership for women's women's sports, and now it's been elevated to that next level. PWHL, Caitlin Clark, and all all those great things, and it's finally sprouting into something pretty beautiful, and it'll continue to grow. We had Brian Burke on Hello Hockey on Saturday, and I threw it at him. I said, well, why is the PWHL working compared to the old leagues? And he said, A, everybody's together on this. And then B, the viewership numbers and a lot of the the crowds that are showing up on location, um, the the audience from a women's standpoint, female standpoint, is, is up big time. So it's a lot of women supporting women on top of uh, sports fans who are ma- male also being like, I'm going to watch this. So that's huge to see. And yes, it's beautiful, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> nice way to put that. Uh, you guys also for Nate, yeah. new men's basketball coach? We do. Uh, Adika, Peter McNeely. Uh, so uh, a little bit off the board, a little bit here. Um, pro, he's played pro for past seven years. He's currently on a contract in Spain right now. So I spent two hours with him on a Zoom call yesterday, just getting him answering all his questions he has right now but uh it's always tough we when you lose someone like uh, jordan baker who's an icon in the city of edmonton and whatnot so uh but uh congrats to him and we're so happy for him to with his role as head coach and general manager of the uh, stingers so uh but uh adika is going to be great um some, we had a student athlete on the panel and we're hiring him and he just looked at me and says i'll play for that guy Right. Mm. And so you just, that's like glowing endorsement when you have somebody on the team that says, I would go to the wall for that guy. And you just, you, you could tell he really wants to do it. He's got a really, he's got a really demanding. And what we're really looking for is someone to bring in Edmonton kids, not somebody just to go outside and bring in free people from across the province or even international students. We really want to get those Edmonton local kids and give them opportunities at uh, post secondary. So, and that was his plan right from the start uh, for that as well, too. So, he, he finishes up his contract uh, beginning of June, depending on playoffs and uh, whatnot. So he'll be there. Right now, he's working remotely, uh, Zooming all the <laughs> student athletes, recruiting everybody like that. So it's a little, <laughs> little tough. It's going to be tough to do yeah. that in Spain, time yeah. zone and all that. Oh, yeah. Even like it's an eight hour difference from here. And <laughs> I call him and I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, sleeping, Jordan. I'm like, oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we got to go through this. Yeah, we got to hey, get this done. Yeah. Order but yeah, I know it's really exciting for uh, to see how we go. He's actually playing for the Stingers this summer as well, too. And then he's going to kind of just get his fo- complete focus on Nate Athletics after that. So, How is the relationship with the Stingers? How, how has that been for Britain, you know, basketball, you know, in the community, but for you guys with both, both your guys' programs? Well, really good, obviously, having their head coach, who was our coach as well, too, right? So uh, they'd come out to our games, their activation team, and uh, throw some stuff in the crowd. There would always be a half-court shot uh, uh, there. If you get it, you get season tickets to the Stingers. And I know, I know they told us the one thing you need to do is make sure you record every shot. Well, the first few people didn't even make the free throw line, right? So it was bad. So I think our game day uh, coordinator just kind of just dropped their guard. Next thing, I'm sitting in the crowd looking. And this guy, this guy steps up and says, "I think he can make it." And he just sit there, swish. Nobody's filming. Oh, like, no. oh no! We had to go to our cameras up above uh, that had the camera and everything <laughs> like that. But uh, no, the, the relationship with the Stingers is really good. Uh, they yeah, they come and support our golf tournament, which I heard you talking to Murray. Was it yesterday? Uh, our, our Nate Athletics Golf Tournament, here's a shameless plug, is uh, May 31st. And uh, that all the money goes to student athlete scholarships as well, too. And Murray and the Ranch have been fantastic at hosting us. We just love going That's to tournaments there. It's unreal. They just right? do such an yeah. amazing yeah. job. Yeah. You've yeah. played in a bunch of tournaments yeah. there. Oh, yeah. It's just... I th- they've improved their PA system. Yes. <laughs> yes so right. that, that was always a big thing for us. <laughs> is like, the PA was always say? a little rough. Yeah. Yeah. But beyond that, they, they just... You know you're going to have a great day there. Yeah. Yeah. When you're set up for a tournament. Yeah, no, it is. They take care of everything, right? And I don't know what they do. I'm probably jinxing it now. Weather's usually good there, but yeah, it's worse. You just always yeah, stuck on the really there. Cool. 
But uh, yeah, no, they just do a fantastic job. So yeah, and all that money goes towards our student athlete scholarship. So it's a it's a fun day. Well, and that's the big part. You know, we had we talked to many weeks at the beginning of, of the athletic season. Yeah, you guys have to go out and, and raise a lot of money. That that's the challenge that you guys have as the athletic department, isn't it? Hundred percent. And uh, it's come full circle where we had uh, we used to have we used to be the have quite a bit of dollars for scholarships because mm-hmm. we had all these things, but. Uh, um, now it's tougher, right? Because we'd, we'd run, run what was called the world's richest hockey draft right there. So oh, I remember, I remember yeah, that. It's still going on. Yeah. The problem is right now, everybody can just vote. They can just gamble on your phone on every single thing you can do. Right uh, now. So yeah, I guess. Thing, Cause that was a big thing. Like you'd get the paper, the journal yeah. yep. that, that the, before the playoffs and it right. would be a huge ad and yeah. it's right there. So yeah. The winner would get 50 K. So it, uh, it was good. And it, it's, uh, so that we still run that. We run the golf tournament. Yeah, we do a few casinos and whatnot. So, but it's all fundraise. So it's all the student athletes getting out there and uh, work, working for their own scholarships, mm-hmm. right? So it's t- it's tough, but it's not. You guys all know it's not cheap going to school. So, and the other thing is, student athletes they can't really get a job. Their time is too demanding, for the most part. Like it's very rare that you'd see a student athlete actually working a job because they're in weight sessions, they're in uh, video, they're in training every night. Right. And then they compete on weekends. So when are they going to work? So we really actually have to work hard and get them some uh, student funding and whatnot. So that's our team. And we're always constantly thinking of other ideas, how to get that. So how do you get people get in touch or get involved in the golf tournament they want? Yeah. Just- so it goes live the 17th, which I believe is okay. tomorrow, I think. It right? is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it goes live tomorrow. Uh, just go to nadukes.com. There'll be a link on it right there. And um, yeah, you can get in that way. And uh we almost sold out like last year, so we'll be close to selling out right now. If they want to sponsor a whole, then all that money goes to the student athlete scholarship. So it's great, and uh, I don't think uh, it's it's a very fun time too. Everybody has good has a good time. Jordan, I know a lot of uh, colleges, universities, a lot of the funding sometimes comes from uh, alumni. Do yeah, alumni pitch in at Nate? Is there a lot of that, or is that something that could could be a little bit better. Yeah, it definitely can improve. Now, I say that, and we have an amazing men's hockey alumni. Mm-hmm. Our OHAA is unreal. The, they get together, they raise money, they do all these other things specifically. There's that close unity they like to do. Uh, you play for Ook's men's hockey team, they stay together, they, get, they have a database, they're always in touch, mm-hmm. right? Has that transcended to our other programs? Not yet. So we're kind of working with... Uh, their president and say, okay, you guys do a great job. How can we do this with the rest of our programs right, right now? Because it is sometimes like Nate's a two year school, like you're in and out kind of thing. There's yeah. it's just not that um, camaraderie kind of like you have with U of A where you're there for four years yeah. or whatnot, right? Now our student athletes, because our coaches are doing a great job recruiting, they're starting to stay. We're starting to have, we have a couple of degrees now as well too. So, um, we're starting to see a little bit student athletes stay for for potentially even their fifth year. Right. So that's coming. And now with uh, our our department has grown as well too. So we're starting to put an emphasis on that because we recognize we need this alumni support for mm-hmm. sure. So, mm-hmm. um, but our men's hockey team does a great job. We need to work with the rest of our program. So fair enough. I never thought about that two year part of it and how Man. difficult that is. Like just yeah, you're you were in school for three semesters. Four semesters was here. Yeah. Right. Like that's no. It went by super fast. Like, but there's not a lot. That's the, that you can't. You know, if you get on a team, yeah. now, now you're not at Nate anymore. Soon, right? Like yeah. you wouldn't be able to keep playing. And I never mm-hmm. thought of that challenge that you would have. Yeah. yeah. And you look at some like uh, obviously the United States is way different. Like different beast. I remember going to OU game and they had like an alumni wing of the stadium and it looked like millions upon tens of millions had been pumped into just that wing. Because they had some affluent alumni pump that money in. John Calipari was announced as the head coach of Arkansas, leaving Kentucky. The booster that basically gave him the money to go hire him got a standing ovation yeah. from their crowd. Yeah, he also runs a business that put a bunch of people out of a job recently in like Iowa or something. And like, it, but no, in Arkansas, getting a standing ovation got the coach this booster guy because he went out and he gave the school the money to go get the coach. Yeah, and there's a thing of like I. I want Canada to get closer to their love of university and collegiate athletics, right. but I don't want to ever become that. No. <laughs> right. I do not want to standing at the Nate Main gym one day cheering on this rich guy for pumping in at like 
60 million dollars into getting this one coach because that's where athletics has gone type thing but he gasped i know you like would love the 60 million dollars yeah. but i'm wondering if i would love that or not yeah no I, yeah. good point yeah <laughs> but we do need to to give more like yes. they're, they're more attention more love getting out to more games i'm a, i'm a huge volleyball fan like i mm-hmm. think volleyball is underrated in it's fun. the love it's that great. it gets and yeah. watching it yeah. and it's growing in the states they were yeah. playing a couple of women's volleyball matches at like Nebraska football stadium. I saw that with and 80, they were selling out eighty thousand people in there. Yeah, it's crazy. Which is great that you, the men's guys they got the national championship. There you go. By the way, yeah. you've never you don't golf. We got to get you into. What is it, wrong golf. with you? He it, doesn't golf. I went to the driving range. I actually oh, yeah, did on right. Sunday. Oh, yeah. and second time ever he's been to a driving time range. Ever. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, I like it's it, it, he, we need to get him at a golf tournament. He'd have a good time at a golf tournament. He would have a great time. If we need to send like a representative, I got. <laughs> if I learned how to swing properly, yeah. Well, I got to figure out what to do <laughs> with him now at our golf tournament. Something. I know. Now that he's an employee, beat uh, Zach on a golf hole. Who? Everybody uh, would. Yeah, I think yeah. Be a good fundraiser. Yeah. Sure. If I had like the Happy Gilmore hockey stick though, like I just wear the wear the jersey, I get the the hockey stick. That's the putter. I think I could do pretty good. Like. That if I was like, yeah, well, yeah, I think so. I think I'd be oh, better because you wouldn't use that putter for anything else. N- well, yeah, yeah, I know <laughs> that. But, sure. Yeah, no, that, I, just having that in my arsenal, though, I I would have a different mentality. Mm. I feel like, yeah, I'd have to play like Happy Gilmore. Just go for it, yeah. We had that Oilers hockey stick putter at the old place. Really? Oh yeah, that's right. I won one of those. I gave it to my buddy. <laughs> I don't think they go work well. I don't know. It was weird. It was it like was a graphite yeah. hockey shaft with. Yeah. A, putter had yeah oh yeah it was no. bizarre yeah did your Whatever. golf team do anything at the tournament like do you guys use that will you guys use them for like beat the pro type <clears throat> type hole like beat we the will i think this was like this was our first year having a golf okay. team so we had technically a golf team last year but we didn't have any players okay. so this will be the first year we actually have players so i'm excited to see what they're gonna do but there's some good golfers there so they'll uh um yeah, that's a good question. I'm going to ask them what they're going well, to do. Something. There's usually sometimes tournaments do have the like you beat the pro type thing. Yeah, I think beat the ook. Yeah, beat on the, the whole, go to par three or something, or even just the par four or something. Can you outdrive the ook? Yeah, what's a lot of fun is our, at our tournament. All of our student athletes, we have student athletes from all teams there, and they all pick a hole, and so they'll have a volleyball competition in a hole or a basketball oh, like competition, that. curling or something like that. They all pick a hole and they do some kind of fun things because. It's all about them. That's what the tournament's for. So, uh, Speaking of curling, by the way, this is the EST Hango presented uh, by White Claw Hard Seltzer, Zach Tomatawanek, Jordan Ritchie from Nate Ooks Athletics, and Tom Gazzola with you here. Uh, Brendan Botcher's rink is looking for a new skip as Botcher is out. So it's not his rink anymore, I guess. This is just coming from TSN. Um, after third place at the Briar, uh, Mark Kennedy, Brett Gallant, and Ben Hebert will be going into a new direction next season. And they've decided to make a change at the skip position. So Team Botcher is looking for a new skip because they're getting rid of Botcher. So it will be Team something else at some point here. Hmm. Uh, kind of a little shocking move, I would say, because usually you build a new team for the next Olympic cycle. And the trials, we're still like 18 months away for that. So to make this change at this point is a little shocking. Yeah. Um, but Brendan Botcher out of his own rink as the other guys got rid of him. So for curling fans out there, and I know there's a lot, and especially in this province, um, that's some big news. Hmm. How is uh, Naduk's curling? Yeah, they're, uh, they did fairly good. Our men's team qualified for nationals. I uh, went there and lost to uh, in the bronze medal game. So it was, that was a tough one, especially they, I think they lost to Sate, if I recall. And that's always a tough one. Ah. Like, when you lose to, you go all the way across the country and play Sate in a bronze medal game. It's kind of <laughs> funny. But uh, um, yeah, no, they're, they're fairly strong. Um, uh, they, uh, they didn't curl out of the Abenair Curling Club because there was a mechanical issue. So they curled out of the Thistle. I didn't even know it was a curling club called the Thistle in town. So yeah. Yeah, but, it's been uh, around a while. Yeah. Avenir, obviously super convenient, but uh, we had Carrick Martin in, and he was saying that there are a bunch of rinks having some trouble and, and there's the potential that they might have to shut down, which is disappointing to hear. Yeah, they're aging, right? That's yeah. what I was told is that uh, that it's just the, the chiller or whatever makes the ice yep. um, didn't go. And so they thought to they wasn't worth to bring it in for that year. So Shoot. yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Yikes. Funding. 
It's all about funding. Yeah. Wow. No. And, and nowadays, just everything, it's just um, a lot of things have taken ma- major hits. And um, it's no surprise based on the last few years that we've gone through um, in this world. But it, it, it's nice that a nice year for Nadeau Athletics and um, probably already looking forward to the start of next year. Is there there's like is there anything that nothing happens between now and the fall type, thing, like actual games or anything like that? No, not really. Um, teams, because a lot of them don't live in town. Right? Yeah. So a lot of mm-hmm. the athletes are living all throughout the province and country for that matter as well too but uh they still get together right now they're writing exams going on right now so they're um they kind of take a little bit of a break right now because uh academics is important our our student athletes had a 3.0 average gpa this, nice. this past year this past fall so it's uh they take a little bit of a break but they're, they're still training like open gyms twice a week they get in there um some like to go more but uh we say, okay, the, these students, they need to work, right? They need to get out there and work. So there's not that. But the coach's job's never done. They're always recruiting. They're in every yeah. gym, every arena, going to tournaments, doing all that. So they're busy the whole time. But uh, it's this time of year is also little, all the staff. We have a pretty big department and everything, and they all just take a little bit of a breath and say, okay, flip the switch. It's now the 24-25 season now, right? Mm-hmm. So the planning begins for next year. So we have a fantastic team at Nate. Uh, in Nate Athletics and Recreation. We've actually joined forces with Recreation and Facilities, so we're one super department right now. So that's great. But, uh, yeah, no no actual games going on right now. Um, it's kind of the dog days of summer, yeah. we call it, right? So you guys probably talk, what do you talk about all year, all summer long? Oh, or Baseball. those third and fourth lines. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Line combinations. Yeah. yeah. Elks, baby. August we'll, we'll do as much Elks as we can. Yeah, yeah no. And August. hopefully something happens in baseball or something that we can yeah. talk about. Yeah. Maybe yeah. golf. You were you ready for your exams? No, oh, wait, yeah, I don't you do those. The pass. Yeah, well, I guess you don't have exams. Away. There yeah. are no exams in RTA. No, right? Or what, for, after exams. practicum? Did you have to do an exam after? I didn't have to do an exam. Oh after no, practicum. not after practicum. Right, like everyone else is on doing these exams. Of his fourth semester, this is it. There's no exam he has to no, do. No, my program's Did kind of a joke. Exam? I didn't have <laughs> for to do lack one. of better terms. It's not a joke. Oh, well, there's no you? test. There's no test. Yeah, because you do, you're That's the in thing. world life experience. Yeah, this, doing, is, this yeah. is it. This is your test right now. This exactly. Whole, yeah, this yeah I had my test on earlier this morning. Oh, that's the hardest test. You just have to write a report. Yeah, 2,500 words. Oh yeah, I remember that. Which is basically just explaining what you did for four months. Didn't we sit in the gym for a big? Big exam no, a didn't. couple of times. I didn't. I think I did. And I still ended up with that 4.0 GPA. Did you? Yeah. yeah I, so I didn't miss terrible. anything, I don't believe. My first semester, I was still finishing <laughs> up junior uh, Jungle Bee, but there was a lot of drinking involved post game. And uh, I think I had like a 1.8 GPA the first semester. I still don't understand how you could do that at Earth. And then I, I wound up with honors at the end because I was done playing. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I can focus on college and a career. And uh, here we are. Nate, it was a great time. It was a good time. Yeah. And unfortunately, the meat store is closed. No. No. It's what? Open. What? It's a no, brand but new store. for the summer. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? Yeah, like, yeah. it's, yeah, it's not going to be yeah, open right. anymore. Yeah. Like, it's going to be, it's done until the fall. Like, not, not, of like, yeah, not. Have you seen the new meat store? I haven't gone to the new oh, one yet. Oh, it's good. Oh, but it Lieutenant Eric loves it. Yeah. And yeah. there's a part of me, yeah, <laughs> there's a part of me that, like, I love talking about it, but also it's like I don't want to talk about it because it's this hidden gem that you're just like. No, I don't it want isn't to... though. It's more. It's more out in the I open. I know that's the, the problem. Yeah. Kind of, it's like you. It's a nice little thing. I don't need it to just blow selfish, up. Selfish, Matthew. You are selfish. Oh, it's true. Share with the it's, world. Help our. It's for Nate only. Matters. It's for Nate only. And yeah. I'm with no. you on that. I can't lie. Uh, the prices <laughs> are amazing, so it's really good. Uh, retail meets student friendly prices. Is that the slogan? Do you remember? Uh, they Cause with those com- we've heard those it's... commercials so many times in <laughs> NR92. It was all, it was all new actually. Was it? Because, well, like in radio and television. get rid of something that works so well? Uh, it's Retail called, uh, ar- it's called the, uh, artisan, um, Oh, artisanal changed. food market now yeah that's what it's called it's oh. not the retail meat store anymore and it was funny because um uh, you know radio and television the program they uh make all of the ads and stuff promotions for enter 92 to have it on the nate radio station um and during that sort of transition like in that sylvana class sort of where it was a copywriting class to write all the scripts and then we'd have to go produce them um reaching out i guess to the client so the retail meat store they were changing their name during that when when a bunch of students had to write for that so they had to like flip script like they wrote a full script and then they're like oh yeah by the way uh we changed your name we got to change our name we got to change everything that we're doing so they made a new slogan i think i don't know what it is but nate artisanal food market check it out 
They'll be the name we'll retail main store in my heart always. That's how <laughs> always. they will be it lives to on. me. <laughs> uh, is Trev here? I don't know. Yeah. yeah is yeah, he? Okay, perfect. I love so make sure. Eric, Eric is right outside the door. I can hear him. He's just yeah. standing <laughs> right there. Yeah. Well, he usually sits down there too, so I'm glad. Well, because we got to get to the ESD flyaway keyword right away here. And um, I didn't know if I have to send you to go do it or if Trev's here to do it. So, Trev, it's going to be on you. Yeah, there we there go. We're gonna, we'll get to that in uh, just a couple minutes here. Uh, this is the ESD <laughs> Angle presented by White Claw, the hard seltzer that started the wave, made with refreshingly real flavors for their iconic taste. White Claw, the difference is clear. Zach Gamatawanek, Jordan Ritchie, Tom Gazzola with you here on the Hangout. Um, yeah, i just trying to see if I've missed anything in the nasty chat or anything we need to There's get to. There's a couple of texts. Let's we'll talk about Minnesota and Cleveland. Yeah. We've got some clarification. Okay. That's how I'll, good. Our also, quick, Northside are. Sandwich goes Matthew in school. What is two plus two? Answer a number. Yeah, yeah. But, thank you, Northside Sandwich. He but knows. no, that's that's not the answer though. Two plus two. The the answer is four. It's not a number. He's using it is irrational. specifically four. Math is very direct. The when it's what school did this teacher? Where did this teacher work? It's a school. It's it's in the name. Oh my, Marathorpe School. It's yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. That's why I get my point five. I deserved. <sighs> Andrew, <laughs> I respect it. Thank you. <laughs> Nerds. I fully don't understand how the current owner would get another team. This is in regard to Arizona. He couldn't pay rent or some hotel bills, and we're going to give him an we're going to give him another team and trust to build a new arena. That would that just doesn't make any sense. Would love to hear the rationale behind that. Andrew, I think the rationale behind it, again, talking to friends that are VPs in other organizations around the league, uh, that was to appease him and allow him to uh, have the purchase being made by Ryan Smith and his group. And so they kind of dangled a carrot in front of him and said, well, you know, you could get an expansion team. You can keep the logos and the names. And then uh, when you're ready and you win the land auction, uh, we'll give you a new franchise. So, I'll And to stop any... Um legal issues yeah because there's like fair, potential like, lawsuits well, you can't just, it's his team yeah he could say i don't want to sell to salt lake right yeah. and unless the owners vote to revoke his franchise and you need two-thirds vote for that and yes. that'd be a dangerous precedent i think for any owners to do yeah. that to force this through you need to get his cooperation yeah. so it's here's a bill you'll give us the bill back yep if we give you an expansion franchise right and he might just take that 600 mil that he made and walk i would yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah, he. So the the uh, there were in that market. Like for me, in that market, I didn't do it unless you feel like you could you could be the guy you could bring it to Arizona, wait four years, and then move it to KC. Yeah, there's a hotel chain that uh, I think was pursuing lawsuits against them, something like that. But uh, it's not good. They weren't paying their bills. Collingwood Rob texted and says, "Hey Tom, the Barons dispersal draft happened in 1978 with players going to the North Stars." This was a way to keep the Minnesota franchise alive while allowing Cleveland to fold. This way, the NHL only lost one team. And then there was another follow-up from Shaggy in St. Albert, who, if it ever loads, says, uh, I thought it was the owner of Mini, got the expansion Sharks, and remember defenseman Neil Wilkinson was a player that was taken from Mini and given to the Sharks in the dispersion draft from Mini to prevent Minnesota owner from leaving Mini. NHL gave him the San Jose expansion franchise. That was the connection owner from the north stars i think became the owner of the sharks hmm. and there was yeah some appeasement in the early 90s hmm. nhl does that a lot a lot of leagues do that i hope yeah. the nfl does that well the nfl is a different piece <laughs> I don't think the nfl does that yeah. uh let's get to our est flyaway keyword for today we want to send you uh, to las vegas where jordan's headed in a couple of weeks uh two non-stop flights three nights accommodations tickets to cirque presented by fly yeg non-stop flights to over 50 destinations your sports trip starts with a non-stop flight from fly yeg visit flyyeg.com for more information and our partners in vegas the lv cva i don't like this keyword today uh, oh let's see it it's not <laughs> this You're the one, one who came up with I these. know this one I'm really questioning. This one I'm going, no, this one doesn't work. That's like it's there. It's valet. That works. It works, but I what's wrong with it? You valet you, your car when you pull up. I know. You it, don't it, have to, but well, how many people are actually driving in, in Vegas? I don't know. No, it's that's a, a good lot. Thing. I know, but that's the thing. Like they're not there's there's the valet parking and I know and there's all that. I see nothing wrong with well, valet you. as a keyword. You're making me feel better. Today this whole time as I was typing that one in, I went, This one stinks. No. In my mind. You've had other stinkers. 
Well, I thought the morning show one today. Excalibur. That's the name of a hotel and resort. Yeah, I barely know how to spell that, though. Like what? Well, <laughs> that's where I, that's you know, where I ch- like I was worried about was doing some of hotels. Yeah, because of spell. having to spell Excalibur. You don't have to spell MGM Excalibur right now. Grand. <laughs> no, I just did MGM. It was great. Park uh, MGM. Valet, by the way, V A L E T seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. That's the Paris Jewelers inbox. A text it right now, Valet, uh, to get into the draw for the ESD. You'll fly away, travel, give someone a call in the next five minutes. So I just want to make sure I get that. Where Where are we staying, yeah, Jordan? Yeah. When we go to Vegas? Oh, uh, this time we're at New York, New York. Just because it's, it's close, right? Yeah. It's close See, to the See, this is even better for going to a hockey game. Yeah. If you land at five, it's right there. Yeah. yeah. Just like go to the front desk. Here's my stuff. Yeah. We'll be back. Yeah. Head to the hockey game. I think our Boom. flight gets in at 620 and the game's probably seven. It's going to be tight. That would be tight. Yeah. The NHL, the 7 o'clock game, 7 that's 735 yeah, almost. That's true. You know, yeah, like sometimes you could get there. No problem. Yeah. Uh, New York, New York, they just redid some of the rooms. So that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, that's like a hot corner. I think that has the, that corner until the Tropicana was shut down last week. I think it was had the most hotel rooms on a block in the world. Oh, I believe it. It's massive. Yeah. It's crazy. Team Belange is saying it's better than Excalibur Valley. What's wrong with Excalibur? Excalibur is (laughs) Vegas. I'm sorry. No, you're wrong on that one. The Dirty Castle. Well, that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. That is, that is Vegas. It was like one of the largest hotels in the world at one point. It was, yeah. But then, like, I think uh, what opened up right after MGM Grand, like literally a month later. Oh yeah, right across the street. Yeah. So no, that that one I stand by that one. That one I'll defend Excalibur. I I'll accept Zach's point of it's hard to spell, but <laughs> that's it's about a, it. <laughs> it's a great word for this one, and it yeah. is. It's way better than valet. The first hotel, I didn't even stay at the a hotel. It was a motel that when I went to Vegas at 14 with uh, my parents on a West Coast trip was the Vegabond Motel and Inn across from uh, Circus Circus. It has been since torn down to make room for the Encore, thank God. Uh, it was, I remember like pulling in up the strip, coming from San Diego at the time because we went uh la did disney world all that universal then we went to san diego sea world and then we came up and stayed in vegas and i was like oh, okay cool vegas and i love vegas vacation great yep. movie yeah it's one of the best bad movies out there <laughs> and I'm, I'm seeing all the lights i'm seeing these monster hotels i'm like dad are we staying there dad oh caesar's palace are we staying there he's like no no dad where are we staying I he, vagabond and i'm like where is this thing <laughs> And we get to Treasure Island and past the Mirage. And then there's this like rink a dink 1950s motel. We pull in and I was like, this is some BS. I'll tell you what, at 14, <laughs> my mom was so mad at my dad. So mad. And then I, I was like, well, those other hotels must be expensive. But when I turned 21, I went to Vegas and I was like, they're dirt cheap to stay at. Oh, they're no. dirt cheap to stay at. And I went to my dad, I'm like, what's wrong with you? He's like, what? You had a good time, didn't you? I'm like, no, you had a good time. <laughs> anyway, yeah. it's a good hotel. And he never obviously got torn down, and uh, they, they stay at nice hotels now. So Your mom won't let it any other oh, way now. She, is, she, all, she brings it up, too. She'll be like, Renato, why did you make us stay at that crappy hotel? <laughs> She's a little Polish lady. So Anyway. Oh, there's so many nice resorts there. They're right? beautiful. Yeah. And you're right. They're not expensive if you go during the week. If you go on the weekend, it's... It goes expensive. up. Yeah. yeah. But that's the thing is they yeah. suck you in with the cheap rates yeah. and then you just blow your money elsewhere at yeah. their many, many outlets. That's how you do it. That's how you do that's it. That's how you get it done. It's a hook. That's where sometimes... The uh, Park MGM, though, it's right across from New York, New York, but yep. it, and it's non-smoking. So we like to usually, when we go there, stay there because you don't... It's a non-smoking hotel. You don't get that a lot in Vegas, right? No, so. no, I wasn't allowed to smoke my Dutch Master cigar that I bought in that place. <laughs> you I had to go somewhere else. That bad it was great. Boy, yeah. Wait, it was inside? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Wait, well, what? I didn't. I didn't even know that. You can smoke like anywhere it. in Vegas, pretty much, except, except for the park. The park yeah. 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 You go oh. when you're on like on the casino floor and stuff. Like you, could, you can smoke while you're there. There's certain spots. I remember being in the MGM. I think there was a spot where there was no smoking past this point. Yeah. Which is always wonderful because like what we've learned for the last many years, is <laughs> it makes the no smoke sense. just goes. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. But you could like walk around and just smoke. And in fact, 
it's it used to, the river Cree used to have it. Yeah, they just recently over the last few years got rid of smoking. Did they really? I believe so. I don't believe you could smoke. Yeah, I remember Cree being in there when when you were able to smoke there. Oh, it's yeah. hilarious, right? Like, when yeah. you, it's a circle, and they'd say this half you can't, <laughs> yeah, and this half you can. I'm like, boy, oh, you think the smoke just stops? <laughs> just, <laughs> it's yeah. the same. Remember restaurants? <laughs> yeah. Would you like smoking or non-smoking? Well, I'll take non-smoking, but I'm sure yeah. the smoke will still find oh, me. Oh man, <laughs> uh, remember smoking in bars? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, when I, maybe you're too young for. Maddie, because you're yeah, I went to bed smoking. I was young and like I was not old enough when when they put the law. Yeah, I was eighteen, nineteen, and you you could rip darts at the bar as much (laughs) as you want. Yeah, and you would get home and you just reek like cigarettes. Uh, Yeah, I don't know about weed though in in Vegas smoking it inside. Uh, I don't think I don't. It, I don't. Remember, I didn't smell legalize. Any, I know that's where I was going, but I didn't smell it anywhere you're not inside. Supposed to. I don't think you would be allowed to then. You're not supposed to. Not, not in cigars. the hotels. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Um, I don't think you're supposed to like on public streets either, but people just do. Well, you're not supposed to in certain doorways. I mean, you have to be distance and Edmonton, yeah. and no one well, ever is fully it. as no. close that as that is or whatever it is. Yeah. But yeah, you could smoke in Vegas and the yeah. thing. So I had my. Huh. That's where I got those Dutch masters for the ho- heavy hockey showdown. Oh, mm. yeah, you guys okay. didn't earn. Yeah, we didn't. <laughs> next year, next time. <laughs> well, me and Coach Peter are wasn't... planning to overturn your entire roster, and you guys, there's a lot of you that might not make the cut. Ouch. Well, I know. YTT's well, we're... first off. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we're the, here's what we're looking to add to next year. We had we played in a hockey charity hockey okay. event, and we lost. And so now we need to add Sean Bell, oh, Matt oh. Cassian, Joaquin Gage, yep. Ben Scribbins. Yep. Um, who else did we have that we were going to bring onto this team? We were going to try for maybe Dylan Holloway. Uh, oh, just, just modest. To try to, yeah, we were just going to shoot a <laughs> yeah. hey. shot with him. Uh, Gage threw to a couple of other players that we were going to bring on. Um, like, it was like we immediately were like eight, nine deep yeah, I'm not into on the some team. new players. And, like, there, <laughs> there will be some – those guys will not have to try out. For you guys, there might be some tryouts if you want to be back on this team because you failed Coach Pete and I yeah. and Lieutenant we Eric and – our goalie coach, Fergie. I, I wear that shame to this day. <laughs> I was surprised you, you and Dusty were too scared to like jump up the rush. I enough. know. Well, you guys focus all, too much on defense. We're not defense men. And so, but you guys played defense because <laughs> nobody else wanted. No, to. I know, but you guys, <laughs> everyone else, you guys could. tried staying in your side, your own blue line. Almost, uh, I know. Instead of like, I had to yell like, no, just go up. Screw I, it. We're down by five. I tried. Who cares if we go up another yeah. goal? Go score a goal. Tried. Didn't work. No, it didn't. My coaching failed. I would not be good for the name. Good motivator, though. <laughs> <laughs> the video is apparently close to being ready. Oh, that's good. Um, Does Sean that... Bell still play a lot of hockey? I um, was told, um, don't expect defense from him. Okay. No. <laughs> he did win his men's league, CCRHL, Go Bald Eagles. Yeah. Uh, they were uh, crowned league champions last week. So. Oh, we're bringing Strutty on board. Yeah, we get Stratty on board. Because I wanted that defense, and I think Stratty would be decent we defensively. Need, we need oh, some okay. Swedish flavor, too. <laughs> Who are we adding? Swe- oh, for Stratty. Yeah, yeah, he's going to bring that. He considers himself Swedish. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's... Oddly enough. Yeah, I think he'd still make the team, Tommy. Thank you. I think he'd That's still make gr- this I'm team. I'm a great yeah. glue guy in hockey. Zach, <laughs> Trav, I'm sorry. You guys are... <laughs> I, I'm not if like it's your, between if, me and him, I'm making the team. I don't times think that, over. I don't think I'll tell you this right now. Yeah. Oh. If I'm building this roster the way that it's being built, it's not going to be between the two of you. It's going to be both of you. Damn. <laughs> Trust me, there's not going to be a one or the other. Yeah. On this situation. I'll be the equipment guy then. <laughs> Great. If, the maybe, bench warmer. Maybe if there's injuries, we're looking at adding you guys. Um, Trev should be here right away. Um, for our call for the qualifier, but uh, this news now just coming down from Golf World. I don't know if you saw the news yesterday from this, but Rory McIlroy's dismissed a report of his move to live golf, committing his future to the PGA Tour. I don't know if anyone saw that. Yeah. There was a report yesterday that he was going to take $850 million and a 2% ownership stake in live golf to jump ship. That just couldn't happen. No. <sighs> it's a tough one. It, like, it, now he, he's commit. he's committing. Um, that said, I've all those other guys yeah. at one point committed, all committed. to the PGA, yeah. and then two weeks later they're in live. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if Rory did it because of how much the PGA, like the head of the PGA Tour, Jay Monahan, and those people turned their backs on him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How yeah. he was the defender of the PGA Tour. He's the one that made the big statements about this is the place to be. He was working with Tiger to build everything else, keep people there, build their virtual league. And then all of a sudden it came out, the PGA Tour is trying to merge with Live Golf. Yeah. And blindsided Rory McIlroy. 
that I can see if he sits there and goes, well, what's the, what was the point of all of this? Yeah. I'll just go get the bag now. Peace. I won't be surprised if, like, that's, that's where I could see some of it from, but it would be a massive about face turn. Yeah. Well, John Ron, that was a huge one, too. Third person. Third person. What's going on? It took on? three people. What? We get hundreds Two people of people, at, like, texting in the, the keyword, and then they don't pick up their phones. Within minutes. That's Still what I always phone. find weird. Yeah. Like, did you forget within 30 seconds that you texted in <laughs> trying to win a trip to Vegas? Maybe that worked. Evidently. <laughs> Uh, we'll continue this Rory McIlroy talk right away here, but, um, we've got the person on the line, Trev. Wait. Oh, okay. We got to wait. This is, uh, also shorts for Trev today. Bold move. I respect that. With the temperatures Spring dropping is down coming. a little bit. Oh yeah. It's going to get cold. Yeah. Ah, that's, uh, I'm back in pants for a few days, but I respect Trev's move for, for keeping the shorts on. We're good to go. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got our qualifier on the line. We think for the ESD flyway. Right. Brian, uh, congratulations. You are in the draw. Have you ever been to Las Vegas before? I have been many times. Have you? What's your favorite thing to do when you're in Vegas? I usually eat and drink my way through Vegas to be honest with you. Oh, very nice. Now, are you one of those people that likes to smoke on the casino floor? <laughs> or are you one of those that just uh, maybe more than park MGM and staying away from the smoke? You know what? Maybe it depends on how many drinks I've had. Ooh, I like that. Well, congratulations. You're in the draw. April 26th on the morning show, we'll do the grand prize draw. So that's next Friday. Uh, if you're the winner, be sure to keep your phone on because you got to answer. Um, and then you could be off to Las Vegas. Awesome. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate Con it. Congrats and best of luck. Your next chance to qualify for the EST Flyaway coming up during the lock shop. And then one more chance today uh, on two guys and a goalie uh, as um, we have our four chances to qualify. Again, we're giving this bad boy away next Friday. So you have till next Thursday uh, to qualify, Brian. He said, it, depending on how many drinks, depends on whether he oh, eat the smokes or gets not. Gets the Marlboros it's, out. That's or, actually, I didn't ask what it was. Or the cigars. Yeah. There's something nice about grabbing a nice stogie. And, yeah, cigars different, you yeah. know? Celebratory, sure. right? You're not gonna. Oh, well, you're not gonna well, have you one. Just in, you just it. It's a slow you don't burn. inhale. Yeah, you just you just yeah. enjoy. It. You gotta chat, whatever. Like different yeah. tastes. It's different. good on a golf course. My dad loves it on a golf course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ripping darts is. A, eh. It's a little yeah. No. Back to Rory though. Like <laughs> oh yeah, Rory. yeah. It's. Would you be completely up mad at him if he ditched? Well, the timing of that rumor was after he struggled right in the Masters. Yeah. So I think people are saying, oh, maybe he's not as invested in the PGA anymore. And But for everything he stood for, I'd be disappointed as a fan if he did that, right? So, And I know a lot, I talked to a lot of friends as well, too, when we heard that yesterday, that you just have this pit in your stomach. You're like, he wouldn't do that, would yeah. he? But my, like you said, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Would he move the needle for Liv? Because I don't think he actually would. I don't think he'd, he'd like, he's 34. Mm -hmm. He's getting past the prime. I hate saying that. And I know in golf, you could still go win upwards of 40, but it's sure. not as, as often as you can. There's a lot of great young golfers. Scotty Scheffler is just absolutely a monster on tour right now. Yeah. Um, it's been a while since he's won a major. Yeah. Like, th th this is, to me, John Rahm would be a bigger move than him in terms of watching that player in the PGA. This year, I think he's had one top 20 finish. Finished third at Valero Texas Open, which isn't that big of a field, like yeah. that great of a field. Beyond that, he's finished less than below twenty. Yeah, I, I don't know if he would move the needle to get people to want to watch live golf. If all these other guys had it, and, and Rory at this point of his career, I don't think would do it. Scotty Scheffler would. Yeah, maybe he wouldn't. Live golf. There's something about it. Having watched it this year more than ever, I would glance at it like last year, the first year. Very rarely. This year, I've actually sat down and watched a couple of tournaments and followed. It just doesn't have the... It obviously doesn't have the prestige, but the jam to it isn't really there. The luster. Yeah. It's it's like watching a casual Saturday of golf with four randos, but they happen to be like some of the best in the world. It doesn't it, it d doesn't have that essence that, that the PGA Tour has. And, you know, the... the the music and the the shorts. I'm not. Gonna, I'm surprised at like watching these guys playing shorts. How much of an effect visually it's had. It's like oh, this is just a casual round, and then the playing 54 instead of 72. Yeah. It just the, the the essence isn't there, you know. And it feels like it's just the casual stepbrother to the PGA, and that's why I think 
overall. Like even listening to the broadcast, I listen to David Faraday, and I'm like, ah, oh, he doesn't care. He's just collecting paycheck, and he's got a big name. I, I don't miss David Faraday on the broadcast. The PJ ones. He's a familiar voice, but what do you think, Jordan? So this merger, though, like, wasn't there supposed to be a merger? What does that actually entail? Like, are they actually going to join forces? We, we honestly, because I think that's thing what no one's waiting for right now. Yep. They're like, okay, so what's the difference? One, a bunch of players got a bunch of money, and now they're all going to be one league again sometime soon. Anyway, I think that's my perception. That's what I think. They're eventually going to join again. So, but it's like the thing, and you're right because we've never gotten any sort of details of what yeah. the merger would potentially look like. Yeah. Is the PGA Tour and Live going to be separate? Yeah. Are they both going to work? Is it actually just the PGA and the Live's going to die? Is it going to be, well, both are there, and can you move between the two? Or is it you're stuck on Live, you're stuck on PGA? What happens with all the guys that took this money at Live Golf and the guys that didn't in the PGA? What about the suspect? Like, there were so many questions that we got. We've had zero answers to right. that it's like, well, I don't even know if like this merger would be good for golf because I don't know what it looks like. Yeah. And what are the ratings for live? Like I awful. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like I, I you don't even hear about it, right? So I don't know. And, and the, the crowds aren't great. Yeah. No. They don't play in for and this is where I feel like John Rom last week when he talks and it seems like there's remorse. Yeah. He he's regretting his decision a little bit because yeah, you get your money, and that's great. And we could sit there and say, you know, we'd all take the money. Mm -hmm. But at the same time It's empty. It, it might feel very empty that maybe that money's not worth it to some of these guys. Yeah. Where you're Gonna go win a tournament and there's five people. Yay! The one in Australia apparently was like really yes. well attended. But they it was destroyed a good party. the golf course. Yeah. Oh. My really? buddy went to it and he yeah. said it was phenomenal. Great well, time. Like the, the 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 everything the course was pretty damaged afterwards. Yeah. Look surprised. at the leaderboard though at the Masters. Like playing fifty four holes all year long, you're not really used to playing a full round in a major right yeah. now. The leaderboard, there weren't any live golfers on that leaderboard. Not so really. These people that are used to winning, ROMs and whatnot, you're right. I bet you they do regret going. So Well, he wants to go. He wants Liv to do 72. That was a big thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bryson, you know, had a, a decent run, although he fell apart. What was it on Saturday? Yeah. I didn't mind watching Saturday that. Started, but then he birdied 18 with the chip. And I was texting I was, like, I was like, maybe that's the turning point for the next day. No. And then he started off terrible. I was like, yeah. no, he's out. Okay, yeah. cool. That was a great yeah. shot. But... <laughs> I, I don't I don't know and it's you know what Jordan like and the reason why I remember live or I, I have been watching more I watched it once early in the season on YouTube mm -hmm. now it pops up on my YouTube. I'm like oh yeah live and I'll put it on and I'm like yeah the so, and I've done you. that a bunch of times and Clausen kind of got me into it too when he was talking he about loves how it. much he enjoys it and I was like I'm gonna give it another shot and that's what happened now on YouTube the algorithm has got me and I'll, I'll pop it on and I'll watch for an hour or two and just kind of keep tabs and watch the next day. And uh, even watching the the victory ceremonies, they have a podium and they have, you know, they announce the winner, then the team winners. And you're like trying to follow along. It's like, okay, he's leading the, the individual score, but this team's winning. And it's like, I, I don't understand this. And they kind of celebrated the team win more than the individual winner. Well, if you go to their website, I think, and Murray sent me a screen cap once, the first thing you see is the team scores. Type yeah. Thing. Like they're, yeah. So that's what they're trying to push. Yeah. So to me, just get rid of the individual scores. Yeah, but that leaderboard, I don't even understand what that leaderboard ah. is. I think I'm at a horse race or something. Yeah, just... and it's bizarre, isn't and it? And the names are written weirdly. Yeah. yeah. Like, give me the full last name. Yeah. That's what, just give me the full last name with the initial of the first name right there. Yeah. There's a template there. The there PGA is. uses it. All you have to do is take it, simplify it, and make it in live colors and branding. Yeah, make it your own a little bit. Yeah. That's it. But and don't mess it all up. No. And Especially the golf one. They fixed some of the camera angles, too. Yeah. But production has got gotten a little bit better. But there's still some shots where I'm like, what am I looking at here? Like, why am I? So, I don't know. It's... Almost, but not quite, I yeah. guess. You know? You watched the Masters this weekend a little bit. Yeah. And you've never watched a golf event kind of before, have you? No, no. I've what did never you take of watching golf? It was pretty exciting. Like, <laughs> that's, but you don't hear that a lot from people that don't watch golf. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Even golfers will sit there and say, I don't like golf. So I'm, I'm glad I, you said that. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was interesting because, you know, it was a little bit slower. I love hearing about the players and sort of getting sort of context of what each individual has sort of done and the commentary team kept it really exciting. I love the shots too, like just visually. It was enjoying to watch all the drone shots they had and everything, yeah. seeing how beautiful the course was. Yeah. 
And then it went for, you know, the it went for the shot, the tracking of the ball and everything like that. Like all the little details really made the whole sort of uh, product really enjoyable to watch. And then some things happened where it was like, you know, you just, I don't know. I would just expect a shot to make it and then it would, would wouldn't go. And then the other way around, it's like, there's no way this guy's going to make that putt. Yeah. There's no way. And it he gets it perfectly. And it's, <laughs> I don't know. It's it, it's interesting to see how patient they are and how much time they take to really gauge what shot to go take. Like, especially, I guess I'm talking uh, once you're on the green um, putting. Like, I don't know. They bend down. They look, <laughs> like you know, look at the level of the, the grass and everything. And it's like, you got to you gotta get it perfectly. It's like math. It's... It's science. You just got to get that equation right for the shot to be uh, put in the hole. Thank God someone brought a PS4. Was it Ma- Big Maple? Yeah. Okay, you're going to have to start playing Rory McIlroy golf. Although the game's I used not to. working well. It's not? I, gotta figure, I, I oh, started playing it, oh, so I got to refix the thing and maybe hopefully get the game working. It was too easy. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was on, like, the game, Rory McIlroy, it was like, for, like the 2012 version or whatever. Eat, drive middle of the fairway. Shot onto the green like five feet, easy putt. Like it was so it easy for me. I don't know. Those Maybe games your are uh, settings are too low. I got to see if there are settings. But it's like it was one of those where, like, yeah, I read the wind, so I was like, okay, yeah, I just got a. That's gonna wind's gonna put it here, so I moved it, and yeah, it was really easy yeah. for yeah. him. It would, he could learn golf. Well, it'll help. He'll learn his mm-hmm. shot clubs. And yeah, there was this post going around uh, the other day. It was, would you rather? <laughs> excuse me. Would you rather play Augusta National one time or have Sunday? Uh, final round tickets for life what would you rather do play it no sunday final round for rest of life play it how hard would that course be for someone like <laughs> us so the other thing is um if you start so there's a two ways of doing this the one at first one i've seen is if you were 100 yards away from the green do you think you could win the masters every hole you start 100 yards out no i agree those greens right but then also if you started on the green do you think you could win the masters no and I don't the, think it's I like could. Putting either. on glass. Yeah. It would take me like, and you're probably starting on the edge of a green. Yeah. It would probably take me like a par three would probably take me four or five. Yeah. <laughs> Minimum. Yeah. There, it's there's no chance. But I would no like it's so exclusive. Like you, I could go buy tickets for Sunday on StubHub or something. You can't just pay to go golf Augusta. Okay. I How? would take that in a heartbeat. Hmm. Before you go, what, what would you take? Oh man. Uh. I think uh, we had this conversation with some friends and whatnot, and they all took. I think I take the Sunday tickets. So you're like Tom. I think Thank you. It's because it's your whole like you go there every year. <laughs> it's personal thing you I do. I love watching the Masters to go there every year. Yeah. That playing that, I think I'd be so frustrated playing that course. It'd be a great experience, but I'd be so frustrated. Exactly. <laughs> I try. I played. I played Mayfair like the week yeah. after LPGA, and it was. A miserable experience. <laughs> this is where you get mad at me for saying, or you're not mad at me. You tell me that I, I'm too frustrated at golf. That's where you got to go mentally knowing I'm going to be awful. I'm <laughs> no, going to enjoy my round. Go and be like, it, yeah. I want to test myself. I almost I almost shot 100 that round. I was so mad. Yeah, and you would not break 100 at Augusta. <laughs> no. But it would be great because you're golfing Augusta. Oh, my God. There was actually some of the media draw. I would ask you, but... Well, <laughs> your son, you in golf, it doesn't yeah. matter. I don't know. I, I I would like to be on the course, but watching it, watching it would probably be the option that I could take because I would, I mean, I would be a thousand. Somebody, <laughs> I, I don't know how many. Somebody shots who won take. the media draw has never golfed before this year. She was there covering it. She won the draw. She's never golfed. Uh oh. So I don't know how she did yesterday, <laughs> but like I also feel like there should be a requirement that. You could, could you not before. give that away? You think? I, I don't. I don't think you can. I but I also know. don't know why you're entering the draw to golf your first ever golfer at Augusta. Like, yeah, that would be rough. Maybe oh, no. Boy. But no, I would. I would want good it. Good for her though. Yeah. I'm jealous. That's awesome. Yeah, I, millions of us would be right. I just got to go start covering it. Let's get you a press pass. Next I year. actually Ooh. looked online this weekend of how to what the contact for next year. Yeah. Perfect. Because I will. I will Let's go. I think you. I will do it every year. I'll pay my way there. I'll call back. Get it sponsored. Do this. And I will enter that draw until I win so I could golf. And we'll then they're like, well, I'm done. Why couldn't we do a master's special here? You live on location. I would do that in a heartbeat. There you go. <laughs> Fly Murray with me. Murray and I will just do a master's thing Perfect. every day. Yeah. 
I've entered for tickets for, the, for every year for probably the last 15 years. I've got the, I won the practice rounds once, but I'm not going to go all the way there just to see a practice round. I've heard those are awesome. some of the best really? rounds. Yeah. But I think if you're there, then you, you'd want to try and go you to the real. Stick. Yeah. yeah. But I guess like, cause you see a guy, he'll just drop five balls down mm -hmm. and you'll mm -hmm. just watch him hit different shots from that one spot, testing things. And apparently the practice round is actually a lot of fun yeah. to go to. That'd be cool. So you're a big golfer? Well, I, I like to golf. Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> I do. I really like to golf. And uh, with my job in the summer, we have the opportunity to do some a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'd say I, last year I got out for the, probably 35 rounds last year. So. Oh, that's a good year. Yeah. I really think 25 good. to 30 to yeah. me is that's a, you've had a good golf yeah, year at right. that point. Well, I hear you talk. You get out a lot, hey? Well, I have an <laughs> issue. So I'm working on this. This year won't yeah. be again. I, I'm usually in the 25, 30 yeah. range. The one year I did 62. Which was a wonderful year. Huh. Me and my buddy, we had a great time that year. So <laughs> the longest I, I one day did eight straight days of golf, and wow. on the sixth round, I was like, "Yeah, my body needs a break. Yeah. I got to get through two more." It was yeah. great, but yeah, it's yeah. We needed to figure out ways for us to do more golf around here, just because. Get selfish. a putting green in the office. I have one at my place. I could bring. Hmm. I haven't been using it much. It's indicative of how bad my putting yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, take a gust out of this. Where do you want to golf? Anywhere in the world. Uh, I'm going to give you the cash to go to one course to play around. I'd do St. Andrews. Yeah. Just to, to try it. Probably Pebble Beach for me. Just because I've heard about it, right? You hear, I, I don't know much about it, the course, but I'd probably... That's the famous one for me. Beautiful scenery. Mm. Yeah. Well, the St. Andrews, they used to do a thing where I think they've now changed it, but you you could line it's up public, right? Oh, it still is. But yeah. you could you would line up outside and you, you you camp out at night. Yeah. And then you do mm. um, wait list. So if there's ever an opening, they slowly go through those people. They've gotten rid of that. So you don't camp out at night. You right. have to sign up, I think, the day before. Ah. And they've What's changed the one it. in Maui? Uh, they used to do the that first tournament of the year. There. Oh, Kapalua. The Sony Hawaii yeah. Open. Kapalua. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Like just see like the ocean yeah. in the background. Open. Where's that one being played? Not the Sony Open. It's the one before that. Like, Is it the one before? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, the Champions one or yeah. whatever. I'll have to look at the PGA Tour schedule to see if I can find it. I think golfing is just in Hawaii in general. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be it. just absolutely yeah. beautiful yeah. there. See if I can find it here quickly. Um, so we got to find past events. So at the start of the year, that would be the century. Yeah. Kapalua. Kapalua, yeah. Kapalua. That'd be amazing. I've seen that. I went to, I went and watched it there, and I'm like, this would just be amazing to golf. Just the scenery, the views, the waves crashing. It's amazing. I've always wanted to, I always wanted to do Chambers Bay. Okay. Where after the 2015 US Open, where it was just the players hated it. <laughs> you didn't know where the green was. Because of the colors and all that. Right. Remember they were putting it from like 100 yards out? Yes. And it was yeah. just a challenge. And it was a golf course we'd never seen before. Yeah. And then Chambers Bay changed their course and made it more of like a real course. And yeah. now I don't have interest in golfing there. I wanted to golf it as stupid as it was. It was ridiculous. But they were never going to get another US Open, so they had to change it. I like watching those guys struggle. Yes. <laughs> and for them to be in scenarios that we as hackers have to deal with. And you go, well... Part does mean something today, doesn't it? <laughs> I do not want to see minus 25s winning rounds, right. winning tournaments. Yeah. It's too easy. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, the, the once in a while, that's fine. I could live with that. Give me a June tournament's late, whatever. Mm -hmm. Fine. But I, I love the U.S. Open because a plus one might win sometimes. Yeah. The Masters generally is a challenge. You know, yeah. what was what does Scheffler finish this tournament with? Was it nine? Under? Nine or ten. Like, that's perfect to me. Mm -hmm. You could go get birdies. There are some holes that you could eagle. But for the most part, it, it's still going to be a challenge to get a birdie. And you might still bogey because there are some holes that are a challenge. And if you make one mistake on that hole, yeah, you're going to bogey. Yeah. And that's what I love. That's why Augusta, to me, is one of the best courses is that there's rewards, but there's also a lot of risks. And there's yeah. a lot of challenges that you have to work through. And It might be too early, but uh, were you getting that kind of tiger feeling when Scheffler just started dominating on Sunday and everybody just kind of fell away, fell off? I know it's early. But I get that feeling with Scheffler. He is something special to watch. And what what did they say in the last, like, 36 days or something? He's made, like, 300000 per day. Yeah, it's like $13 wow. million or something. Yeah. 
because mm. he won one that second one. That sounds ish Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was some ranking I saw yesterday, and I don't have the full details of this, but it's like a ranking of how people were career-wise or something. They put they just put him past VJ and put him second wow. for this ranking. Damn. Thing. Just, just this run that he's on. Yeah, it's crazy. It's very good. It's... Well, we won't see Tiger again, but this is now just an incredible run. Yeah. Where... It's not even just any tournament. Like he, he wins in this run that he's at. It's players and masters. Yeah. He won the fifth major and the biggest major. You'd argue. Yep. Yeah. And now who, who's not taking him for the next couple of tournaments? Yeah. When we get to U.S. Opens first, or is it PGA? It's PGA. PGA's first. Yeah, yeah they're up next because they moved. Who's not taking him? Good point. Yeah. Like Scheffler of the field right now. Scheffler. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Scheffler of the field. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like just putting you on that spot. <laughs> um, yeah, and even if you just look at the betting odds, it's typically going into a golf tournament, uh, betting odds, it's like plus a thousand or worse. Yeah. He was plus like 470 or something going into the Masters. Yeah. It's just ridiculous that it's almost not even worth putting money on him to a degree going into a tournament because it's the odds just aren't there. So yeah, no. it's uh, it's great. I don't know. It, I, I enjoy it. I like watching guys dominate to a degree. Um, I just and, and hopefully it just pushes other guys to yeah. have to get better and they challenge him. And the crazy part to you, like as everyone collapsed, he also started off very weak yeah. on Sunday. Yeah, He had a couple of shots that were too long. Yeah. And you're like, oh, maybe Sheffield doesn't have it today. Yeah. And no one could take advantage early to maybe take a little bit of a lead. Yeah. And they kept it open for Scheffler and boom, he goes, wins it. And he's just so consistent, right? It just he puts himself in a good position all the time. It's it's impressive. You know, some people well, I told Murray this and he kind of gave me the stank eye. I was I want <laughs> <laughs> So tell us this now. Well, Go on. Well <laughs> I was watching while watching, I wanted uh Bryson DeChambeau. To win, oh. just because of the 3D printed clubs. You, I don't know anything leave. about his personality. You, just just look him up on YouTube and watch two minutes, and you'll be like, all right, I'm <laughs> done with this guy. Yeah. But he had the 3D printed clubs, and I thought that was the most amazing thing. If that's were... why you are interested in him, just please. Hey, you got to pick somebody, right? That's the first person I've ever heard cheering for him. Ever. Oh? That's amazing. <laughs> is, I, is it amazing, or is it like... <laughs> no, somebody has to cheer for him. Uh, somebody okay. actually is cheering for him. I'll go with, like, see, I, I got to defend him a little bit there. Why? Because I hate Bryson initially because of a hat he wore. That stupid hat. <laughs> so if, he, if, 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 I'm, if he loves it for golf clubs, like, that they're 3D printed. You can't printed, hate him for a hat. I, I hate him for a hat, so I, yeah. I get that. It could be small things Fair whether enough. you like there's, or dislike someone. There's that naivete to it, but just go yeah. and watch. Like, if there's a highlight package of him on YouTube, which I'm sure there is, there's probably highlight packages of him being a whiner, which he is. Uh, just check it out. Him and Kepka when they were beefing was always great. Yeah. And I was on team Kepka and I don't even really like Kepka. But I like Kepka cuz he he has he just doesn't care. Yeah, I respect that about right? him. Like yeah. about others, about what anyone says. Yeah. His comments are just uh, they're perfect. But when him and DeChambeau, the height of their ill will beef? towards each other, yeah, their beef, it was phenomenal. I remember like wasn't Kepka a few years ago was doing a uh, interview and like DeChambeau walked behind him and said something, and Kep Kepka just rolled his eyes and sighed, and I was like, "Yes, <laughs> it was great for yes. golf. It was great yeah. for golf. Yeah, it was no, a great I need to battle. go back. I need to go and watch that. And they, That's my homework. They had a back and forth on uh, Twitter. And, yeah. oh, but now, how much of good. that was real beef? And then how, when did it switch to getting a that show, getting that and money, the pip money, and all the that pip money? Yeah, I, you know what? Good on them for playing it up. Brilliant if it was deliberate, but I hope it was fueled by genuine animosity for one another. I think it started that way. Yeah. Because Brooks does not like slow golfers. And that's the thing. It's yeah, like that's Kepka, where it started. Or uh, not Kepka. DeChambeau, he, he's one of those guys. He would go to the other side. He would do this. He would do that. He's like a mad scientist of the game, and that's why he has the 3D printed. Like that part of him, I go, that's interesting. It's too bad you're a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll have to check more into it because that, that's the reason. Like, if you don't know anything about a sport, right, you probably say you're watching the red and the blue team. The, the red team has better jerseys. Maybe you're more fond of sure. them because they have nicer jerseys. So red wins over the Leafs. Uh, oh, 100 Always. times over. Oh, yeah. Since the start. Yeah. I like the color red better. <laughs> no. Flames over Oilers. Oh. Let's go back on <laughs> don't, that. Don't tempt him. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Put him in the, that Ooh. spot there. <laughs> the orange. No orange. Yeah. Orange and blue. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> Do the Caps finish it off again in the playoffs? Well, after they play today, the Flyers. I don't know. You know what? Because good job for the Red Wings. I don't know if you yeah, saw the ending of that, that game was an yesterday. an incredible game to yeah. watch. To get those two goals, go to overtime, win it. One, like we were talking about, like you have Montreal two games in a row. You should win those. Yes. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's, I've turned it off 4 2. I'm like, what are you doing? It's 4 1 at one Was point. it 4 yeah. 1? Like, I don't know how you almost blow that, but now it's like Washington controls it. They play Philly. If Philly wins and Detroit wins, Detroit's in. But if Washington wins, they're in. Philly's on a two game heater. Can Philly still get in? No. Yeah. I think they can. I think Mike Johnson they're, they're mathematically, think, yeah. I think they can. It's Pittsburgh that can get in. I thought Pittsburgh it was no, I think there's a wild, wild way for Philly. Yeah, Philly Everybody wins has to lose. all of them, but everyone else. Who like, is this? It's the fourth, I guess, um, what would you tie call breaker? it? Like the t- fourth tiebreaker, and that would be goal differentials or something. Like it would go down to that, not wins. So Pitt, Washington, and Detroit would have to lose in regulation. Philly would have to win. Yeah. yeah, And, then and they would get the tiebreaker. Yeah. I was looking at it yesterday. For the f- so I want me to go through all of them? Caps, they win, they go to Philly. Red Wings need to win. They need the Caps to earn one point or less or something, so it's there. Flyers, they need a win versus the Capitals. They need the Red Wings to lose in regulation and the Pens to lose in regulation. But their win has to be regulation, too. Against so Washington. Put, against Washington, Red Wings losing in regulation, Pens in regulation. None of those could go to OT or the Flyers can't make it. For the Pens, they have to win, and they need the Caps and the Red Wings each to earn one point or less. Yep. Wow. Or go to overtime, lose to the Islanders, and have both Caps and Red Wings lose in regulation. So there's a lot of different spots. <laughs> is that all? T- a couple? Is that today? Who plays today? All for a chance to play the President's winners, right? New York? They New York clinched it, yep. Yeah. 55 wins. How about the Hurricanes Thanks. tonight? No Aho, Anderson, Gensel, Jarvis, Pesci, Slavin, Stahl, or Svechnikov. So have They're to taking play. on the Blue Jackets. Yeah. <laughs> Capitals, Flyers, Red Wings, Canucks, or Canadians tonight. And then Pens, Fl- Islanders is tomorrow. So we'll know tonight if the Pens have a chance. Otherwise, things get locked yeah. up tonight. Yeah. yeah. And then when do the Golden Knights play? The Golden Knights do play the Blackhawks tonight. So mm. if they win that, they jump past the LA Kings and, and they, they sit can... in the Pacific Division. Yeah. And tough. then they get the Ducks. Yeah. And the Kings get the Blackhawks. Yeah, I think tough it is. loss for the Kings yesterday. Uh, oh my goodness. That was had big implications for the Edmonton Oilers that yep. game yesterday. Yep. As everyone's watching this, the, the, the Oilers destroy the Sharks. Yep. There was that other game happening, which changes. Who they're playing, and I, I know I saw Dan Murphy also tweet that uh, for the Canucks, they're trying to figure out who the Canucks are going to play, mm-hmm. and it could be the Golden Knights or the Preds, and as Dan Murphy uh, said, um, his liver was just like, it's it's going to be in trouble no matter what. <laughs> Murph, <laughs> Murph likes to have a good time. Well, you're, you're choosing between Nashville or Vegas. Nash like, Vegas. Ugh. <laughs> That's going to be a Great lot of fun. Great cities to visit. Ah, uh, what do we got? We've got the uh, lock shop coming up in just under eight minutes time. We got two guys and a goalie. You are oil stream pregame tomorrow here at the station, but Thursday on location at Hudson's That's White right. Ave. It's a listener watch party. The Oilers regular season comes to the end, and then you'll be there throughout the playoffs, various spots. Um, so that's all to come this week here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Um, Jordan, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Um, so again, people, if people want to get in on, let, let's say both. So golf tournament potentially tomorrow. Yep. Or tomorrow. And then uh, the Rich's Hockey Draft. Yeah, you can just go to nadukes.com and it's it's up there. And uh, it would be nice to win 50000 It's always good when the Oilers are doing well as well, too, because people love hockey. So uh, you can win $50,000 and all the proceeds for both the golf tournament and World Riches go to uh, student athlete scholarships. Awesome. To help the Nadukes continue. Growing on, dominance. on their dominance. This year won a few things, you know, like just keep growing, getting yeah. getting better. Look at us, proud alumni here. Building okay. it up even more. This is the Nadukes. <laughs> this is a Nadukes office. There you go. That's that's what you had that nice Nadukes jersey. Or would your shirt or whatever? Which one? That, uh, that you yeah, I have week. an actual uh yeah, Nadukes it's jersey. Beautiful. Actually because uh, I found it at like Valley Village. It's one of the older ones, I think two thousand six jersey or something where flying in yeah 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 and it, it was yeah. it was nice it, okay. it, that thing's amazing and then i have i have a couple other uh Oops jerseys yeah. too i think oh no one other one it's um 
one that the women's team this year they had um, an auction for the the uh, the jerseys to yeah. support um, breast cancer awareness. Breast cancer yeah. awareness. Yep. Yeah. Those are and nice jerseys. I got actually. one of those uh, Caitlin Slater jersey. Oh wow. Yeah. And. I forgot. I mean, she is a goalie, so yeah. it's a goalie jersey. <laughs> so it's like a pajama, pajama jersey, but it, I love it still. All-time <laughs> wins leader for goalies, uh, Caitlin Slater, set the all-time record this year. Nice. Yeah. That's why I had to get it. I'm going to put you on the spot before you go. Yep. What do the Oilers do in the playoffs? Ooh. How far do they go? Yeah, no, it's, uh, I know. I've been saying it since Christmas, so i got to stick with it. I, I like the mix. I like the role they're on. A player like Connor McDavid is going to win the Stanley Cup in his tenure. This is his year. I honestly think they're going to win it. And that's just not because I'm on an Edmonton sports talk. I actually truly believe that they're going to win the Stanley Cup this year. It's I'm not, not crazy. You know, this is, these are the years you can't say anyone's crazy yeah. for saying that. And no. I, my, my thing was, like you, I have to, I'm sticking with it. If they beat the Golden Knights, they're easily winning the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And I use the word easily in there. So <laughs> you just got to get yeah. by uh, modern day Patrick Waugh, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he calls AD. I never oh. called AD. You know, Patrick Waugh. I never on used the those. record. I did say I liked him, but that was all pre injury. We will see if Aiden Hill gets healthy and he's playing his game. I do worry Put an about extra, Aiden Hill, extra but yeah. we will now. Maybe the Oilers don't have to play the Golden Knights for a while. And Quote, we'll see. Aiden Hill is the modern day Patrick Waugh. Matthew Iwanek sometime in 2023. Uh, Jordan, thanks for coming in. All the best. Continue yeah. success with the Natives Athletic Department. Uh, on behalf of Jordan, Tom, Zach, I'm Matt. Thanks for tuning in to the EST Hangout presented by White Claw Live here on iHeartRadio. Tune in EdmontonSports.com and EdmontonSportsTalk.com and YouTube. Lock Shop with Dusty and Huss. It is coming up in just a few minutes. Enjoy the rest of your day. Look at this. Let's go, let's go. There you go, right in front of the camera. <laughs> First time guest, long time listener, fan of the original draft commissioner. Welcome to the EST Hangout presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer. The difference is clear. Matt Awanek, Tom Zola here. Joining us today, 